Coming live on a Saturday night, first one of autumn, and it feels like fall here in South Bend. 55 degrees and a big game feel in the air. Top 10 matchup, Notre Dame and Stanford. The Irish are 4-0. They've got their first road win, a different quarterback, but a feel of big things starting to brew here in South Bend. Meantime, Stanford brings in the Heisman runner-up, Bryce Love. Off a starring overtime comeback win at Oregon, and they get another win on a ranked team on the road tonight. Good evening, everyone. Mike Tirico, Heisman Trophy winner, Doug Flutie, Catherine Tappan, and Terry McCauley will join us here in a little bit. Well, Doug, Ian Book takes over as quarterback for Notre Dame last week. He puts up five touchdowns, responsible for running and passing. What did he bring to this Notre Dame offense that was a little different in your eyes? Just a more efficient passing game. You know, the ball's out in rhythm, it's on time. He trusts his eyes. So therefore he makes a commitment to each throw and he's more accurate with the football. It really opened up the playbook. All right, Stanford's been opening it up. They're doing damage in the air on offense. So the question is, it's been tough running for Bryce Love, the Heisman runner up. Is he still okay? He's still a great ball player. There's no doubt about it. Anytime he touches the ball, he could go to distance. The problem is they're loading up the box and trying to stop the run first. Therefore, you open up some opportunities down the field in the pass game. You're talking about the pass game. When the ball's in the air tonight, we could have a lot of fun. What are you looking forward to the most a lot of big tall receivers and tight ends especially on the Stanford side tight ends jump ball type situations they go up and get it they both quarterbacks will put the ball up and give his receiver a chance and we have a couple of defenses that really don't have superstar players but they bring high quality all the way through all three levels of defense it was a tough call for Brian Kelly to make that quarterback switch Brandon Wimbush was a winning quarterback but the locker room and the team has stayed together and now as they make that walk from the locker room down the steps into the tunnel they have their moment in the tunnel and Stanford waits in the corner as well with their terrific head coach David Shaw they come here every other year and the games have produced some terrific games to tremendous institutions and football programs a meeting of like minded folk here tonight in South Bend and here a bunch of top 10 matchups but it's the first one he's done here in South Bend it's the first home start for Ian Book from outside of Sacramento California his high school about 140 miles away from Palo Alto so he's Northern California kid and here is the team from Palo Alto the Cardinal of Stanford they make this biennial visit every fall to South Bend good start this year four wins including a win over San Diego State and USC and Oregon in a thriller in overtime last week the Cardinal take the field what a magnificent seven years on the farm for David Shaw this is 100th game as Stanford head coach he's won 77 of the first 99 as we've said, the games here have been terrific. Stanford Notre Dame, a top 10 matchup, kicks off in three minutes here on NBC. This has been the U.S. Bank NBC. You're watching Notre Dame Football on NBC, presented by Michelin. First top 10 matchup of teams in South Bend since the USC Notre Dame game, the Reggie Bush push game in 2005. Biggest star in the game, as we said, the Stanford senior running back Bryce Love. And Catherine Tappan, we had the chance to visit with him last night. We did, Mike, and he was nostalgic thinking back to his first career collegiate start here at Notre Dame Stadium two years ago. He filled in for the injured Christian McCaffrey. He said he didn't even know McCaffrey wasn't going to start until kickoff, and he said he was just so nervous. But Love took that opportunity that day and ran with it, literally scoring the go-ahead touchdown in the fourth quarter in Stanford 17-10 win. Love decided to forego the NFL draft to return to Stanford. He's set to graduate two quarters early in December with a degree in human biology with plans after football to become a pediatrician. He told us last night he felt it's important to set an example by finishing his degree. And when you think of student athlete Mike, Bryce Love embodies it. Defines it. Should be the face of the sport. Really enjoyed our visit with him and we've enjoyed watching him on the field. He returns to where it all began. Great 
seen here tonight. Stanford won the toss. They will receive. Jonathan Doerr to kick it off. And off we go from South Bend. Glad you're with us tonight. And it will be a touchback as Cameron Scarlett takes it five yards deep in the end zone. Let's get a look at the starting lineups for Stanford. Brought to you by Jeep. We mentioned Bryce Love doing the damage in the air. J.J. Arcega, Whiteside, seven touchdown receptions, second in the nation so far. Up front, it's a little changeable. This is the fourth difference game with a change in the starting lineup of the offensive line. Jesse Burkett, the senior, the steadiest. His return to the lineup has been so important for K.J. Costello, the Stanford quarterback. The junior gets it rolling from the 25 and it's love and it is a loss of a yard like many other teams Notre Dame lining up to get him Julian Okwara starts his ball game for the Irish already Notre Dame loading up the box trying to stop the run first that's where it all starts the big plays will have to come in the pass game Notre Dame's defense wants to stop the run first. Costello getting the information he took over in November and last year makes his 12th start eight and three overall. Junior grew up in Orange County idolizing Carson Palmer thus the number three he's got a strong arm and you're going to see he handles a lot of the game at the line of scrimmage he's learning how to be a quarterback for the next level while doing well at this level love for a yard that's about it Osmar Ball and Tavon Coney make the tackle third and long coming up in this opening drop Tavon Coney on the left side breaks through and Jonathan Bonner up front occupying two offensive linemen allows Tavon Coney to run free coming to make it stop. Love comes out Trevor Spates is the running back next to Costello. His big play receiver our single white side bottom of the street. Third and ten. Irish bring four. Costello, the throw is incomplete. It was Drew Tranquil there for Notre Dame to break up the pass intended for the tight end. Caden Smith, three and out to start. Well, there's pressure first coming off the right side. It's Julian Acquire and a great job down the field by Drew Tranquil making a play on the ball. The mm. tight ends of this Stanford offense are key to their offense. It's a nice throw. These are two teams with very good special teams. Cardinal have two outstanding kickers. Jake Bailey the punter. Kicks it to Chris Fink. Great hang time to the sideline. 47 yards. Fink just stays in bounds and returns to three. And the Irish take over just outside their 30 yard line for Ian Book. Man did his life change a week ago today. Named the starting quarterback at Notre Dame just two years ago. He was the fifth stringer. And now he's the number one guy. This is third career start. You might remember last year Brandon Wimbush was injured and Book got the start at North Carolina. He came in in relief to win the Citrus Bowl over LSU. Played 11 snaps in the first three games this year. And now his second start. Looks throw on time on target miles breaking gate of 11 first down showing the sideline by Elijah Holder just a rhythm throw with off coverage step and throw he makes the easy throws look easy the easy completions it's become much more efficient offensively and if you want to know why he became the starter that plays the example Tony Jones the run to the left and Jones will be stopped after a gain of a yard Jordan Fox with the tackle for Stanford. Chip Long has said now that he can set other plays up. You know, you can run the easy stuff, complete it, then do something off of it. Opens up our playbook if we're efficient in the pass game. Second year for Chip Long as the offensive coordinator. Jones with a hole. Nice cutback. Yard short of the first down. Sean Barton and Elijah Holder the tackle for the Cardinal. The whole defense flows. Watch your right guard here. Reaching out, Kramer gets his block, but creates a cutback lane as the linebackers are flowing. North-south cut. So the Irish do on third and a long yard. It is Jones running straight ahead and not going anywhere. Bobby Okariki began the lead of that Stanford defense. We'll see where the mark is. He had to get to the Cardinal 46. He's going to be just short, and we'll see what the Irish will do on fourth and less than a yard. 
Okariki, as well as the other linebacker, they seem a little undersized. You know, they're good running east and west and the length of the field, quickness at their linebacker position. Well, first, we have stoppage here for a measurement. Gives us a chance to tell you that the officiating crew on the field is from the Pac-12. And the replay crew is from the ACC. So that's the mix here tonight for this intersectional battle. And it is foot short. No blinking, no panic over there. Decision made here, and Brian Kelly's team going to go for it early on on fourth down. Bring in a bunch of tight ends. Game has three tight ends on the field, including Brock Wright, number 89, is really a fullback in this Irish offense. Fourth and a foot. It's a gap open for just an easy quarterback sneak if they want it. Well, takes it, they'll run it, and Okariki got there on Jones. Question is, on the second effort, did he get across the line? Stanford celebrates like they stopped him, but we need to see the mark. That mark is way back at that original line. No need to measure. The Cardinal will come up with it. So Notre Dame runs power football, and Stanford says no. The Cardinal take over a good field position. Bobby Okariki was the big hit on this opening drop. State Farm by U.S. Bank, the power of possible, and by the stadium's open for tours. Fans come in, they take their pictures, they get to touch the actual side. That's not a freeze, that's an actual kiss there. <laughs> Our cameras are checking on you guys all the time. Funny stuff. That's a bucket list for many, and the chance to walk down that same tunnel where the Irish enter the field every week. Big stop by Stanford, so the Cardinal get the ball on their second drive of their own 47. Costello will get it rolling. It is Love with some space to run. Bryce Love brought down as he crosses to the Irish side of the field, the 47-yard line. Julian Love, Tavon Coney on the tackle. Actually, have a fullback in the game. Williams made a nice block when that opened it up, but it's still an eight-man front. It's still loaded up box. But Stanford needs to establish some kind of run, so they stay with it, and eventually, positive game. That's what people have been doing to Bryce Love. He knows it. They're coming to stop him first, and then make Stanford do it through the air the rest of the way. Like there, a lot of blue shirts for Notre Dame, including Kirk Heinish and Lily Gilman in on the tackle to set up third down. So Dougie was an eight-yard carry guy last year. Even through the pain and the injuries, some ankle problems, 2,100 plus yards, and the game per game number was very high. Now it's half that for Bryce Love this year through four games. He's missed one with injury. The Irish have an injury to deal with right now is Khalid Kareem. The defensive end who's had a fantastic season is being looked at by the athletic training staff. And getting back to Bryce Love, I mean, he knows what's going on and he's still running, he's still explosive, but it's created more big plays because of the one on one matchups on the outside. And Stanford has figured out a way to take advantage of that. Concern for the Irish defensive end will step out. Thousands of live sporting events stream for free with your NBCSN subscription. And the hockey season starts this week. We've got all the details there for you at NBCSports.com slash live. Brian Kelly's defensive end, Doug Kareem, was helped off the field. And the open DG will come in in his place for the moment. Sideline the helmet back on. It's a good side for the Irish. One on one matchups up on the outside. Third and two. Cardinals still looking for their first first down of the game. And Costello doing 
A whole lot of communicating in the noise. He's going to look to throw short, and it's broken up. Pass intended for Trenton Irwin, but Troy Fry Jr. comes in to knock it away, and that's a second pass on third down that was knocked up by an Irish defender. You know, he sits on the route and breaks hard. There was there was enough time to get the ball there. I think the ball was a fraction late, gave Pride a chance to break on the ball and knock it away. They were playing off on both sides. I mean, both corners were good eight yards off. The short timing throw should have been almost automatic. So Notre Dame goes for it on fourth down, gives Stanford the ball in good field position. It does not cost the Irish as it's punted by Bailey and Fink surrounded by white shirts who make the catch at the 15 yard line. So we've told you about Ian Book getting his starting career going at home. Here is Ian's book taking you through his life and times. He was committed to Wazoo to Mike Leach up in the Palouse, but then that commitment flipped to Notre Dame in August of 2015. He wrapped up his high school days in El Dorado Hills at Oak Ridge with a 3,000 yard passing season. Played a little bit last year and then was the star. He came in and saved the game against LSU. And last week, his second start, five total touchdowns. Notre Dame scored 56, most they've scored on the road since a trip to the farm a decade and a half ago. Hand here to Tony Jones Jr. in the gain of two yards. So this Notre Dame quarterback situation is one that Brian Kelly has to handle with care because you had a Brandon Wimbush, the starter at the beginning of the year, a winning quarterback who was doing a lot of things. It's so hard to pull a guy that's been winning. You're undefeated so far this season, but they knew coming through the stretch of the season they had to be more efficient in the pass game. Second and eight for Book, nothing open. He does have wheels, does take off, and gets the first down across the 25-yard line. And that's the part of his game that most didn't know about, but is very solid. Absolutely. Do not sell him short athletically. Very quick, good change direction, good runner with the football. Now, Wimbush could take it 75, but he'll have a lot of 15 to 20-yard runs. Jones picking through space, running behind the left side of that Notre Dame offensive line. It's just short of the 30-yard line. Third time we've called Bobby Okariki, the senior from Foothill High School in Santa Ana, California. Very active. Mm -hmm. Missing Casey Tuhill, their outside linebacker, makes a lot of plays for them. Here's Jones again for a first down. He was a step away from going a long way. Jordan Fox got an arm on him to stop him. Boy, Cole Kinnett came down and did a double team on the left side and just washed everything down half a step away from breaking into the secondary. Cole Kinnett, 84, playing a couple of weeks after a nasty looking high ankle sprain. Book with Tom. Throws. Oh, I break it at the 45 yard line. It was over the linebacker in front of the defensive back and a gain of 18. Boy, Okariki does a great job of running underneath this route from the linebacker level, but it's perfectly thrown. Beautiful throw by Ian Buck. Stanford 44, first down throw with the pressure coming. He didn't see it. He got away from Jordan Fox. Book just running to the sideline. It'll be a loss of a yard as he's escorted there by Joey Alfieri, who had the big play. That fumble return against Oregon that turned the game around for the Cardinal last week. Jordan Fox comes free off the left edge. And this is what we're talking about athletically. Nice quick step to get away. And if Book's eyes are downfield looking for the big play. Gets run out of bounds for vir virtually no gain. But he wanted to make, once he got outside the pocket, he kept his eyes down the field looking for a big play. Dexter Williams in the game for the first time this year for Notre Dame. Takes the handoff and takes off. Williams on the run. The great block. Hainsey with a pull and a kick. Cole Komet, number 84, stays on his block. Dexter Williams touches the ball for the first time this season and takes it all away. Dexter Williams missed the first four games, the first third of the season. It was not confirmed, but widely reported that he was suspended for that first third of the season. He did all the things he needed to to be back in the good graces of Brian Kelly in the program. Returns and makes an immediate impact. 
The first time he touched the ball, Justin Yoon adds the extra point. It had to be a frustrating offseason and start of the season for Dexter Williams. He took all that frustration out of the Cardinal defense. 7-0, Notre Dame. What do you mean it's not working? I know you loved it because the drama is real. Manifest Monday's number one drama. Discover why the critics call it one of the biggest shows of the fall. An instant hit. Manifest new Monday on NBC. Doug has been asking all seasons. We've been building up to the debut last week. How do they go away and not age for five years? Just starting to get some of the clues. So. I'm never, never getting on that plane again. You come <laughs> back, your daughter's married. You got a couple of grandkids. You got an extra dog in the house. But you didn't age. That's the most important but part. But you didn't age. It's, I, I, I don't get it. That's why you had to be there last Monday and we'll be this Monday, too. Let's touch back. Jonathan Doerr has given two of those so far. Cameron Scarlett, the kick to a knee. That's uh, Ethan Erdame defense. Starting lineups over here. Brought to you by Jeep. We saw Kareem get hurt. We'll see if he comes back in. Jerry Tillery's been the best Notre Dame defender in terms of the grading, along with Tavon Coney. They're one and two with the grade so far, the first third of the season. In the secondary, Troy Pride Jr. and Julian Love are going to be challenged and tested. They are most weeks with teams so proficient in the pass game, but very tall receivers and tight ends are going to give two 5'11 corners all they can handle tonight. Third drive for the Cardinals. They're looking for their first first down of the night. Costello's pass is juggled and dropped. Well, it's been a slow start here. J.J. Arcega light side, the intended receiver. May have been tipped on the way there. Well, you talk about the corners getting challenged. This time it's not going to be with speed, but with size. Yeah, this is a ball white, uh, Arcega white side usually catches and comes up with. But this is going to be a game of body position and catching the ball in a crowd. It's not going to be a speed game. For the receivers and corners. Rough start for the Cardinals. Seven plays, eight yards. And all those gold helmets in the box. Eight from the line. Trying to stop this guy. Bryce Love still picks through space and gains four. Audio can indeed you made the tackle for the Irish. Another third down coming up. Nice job of being patient through the hole there, picking his way through. Again, every time Stanford's running the ball, it's against the loaded box. Which means there's an extra defender down there. There is Colin Green, 53, just came back on the field. After they looked at him in the tent on the sideline. Costello Clappin needs it. Third and six. Pressure coming. Hit by Hayes, but he hangs in there. And it's complete to J.J. Arcego Whiteside. First first down of the game for the Cardinals. Well, you're afraid of one-on-one -on -one matchups on the outside, so you have two high safeties, which creates little windows underneath. Whiteside on the slant. Nice release. Great release. He stuck pride to the outside, got up underneath him. That's an easy completion. What a body, what a frame, six foot three, 225. J.J. Arcega Whiteside from South Carolina, averaging 24 catch, seven of his 17 coming into tonight, touchdowns. First down throw, Costello steps into it and finds Trenton Irwin. Not much there as Asmar Bilal and Troy Bright Jr. make the tackle. So as we said earlier, Stanford would love to be a team that hammers the football at you and run it down your throat. Well, you're loading up the box again. So now they come out, throw the ball a little, see if they can loosen up the defense, force them to play a little more pass coverage. That's where David Shaw has seen the development of his quarterback. And they develop quarterbacks without guys looking at the sideline for every sign and other hand signal. They control it at the line of scrimmage. Love. Using that speed, foot in the ground, cuts up field, right at midfield. Drew Tranquil stops him after Love picks up a first down. This is a better way to get him the ball. Get it to him in space. You don't have to block eight guys. You only have to block two or three on the perimeter and let him do his thing. Nice wrap up and tackle by Drew Tranquil because he steps through a lot of these. He's got great lower body strength.
So for Stanford, for Stanford fans, that's an answer to loading up the box to stop the run. Get Love the ball on the perimeter. Get him on the perimeter. Get him in a little bit of space. He's got one-on-one -on -one matchups and pass coverage. Right in the middle of the house that Rocky built from 50-yard line. Pass complete to Irwin again. That's another first down. Tavon Coney with the tackle but Stanford gaining some rhythm on this third drive of the first quarter. Again it's a first down play and they're in there trying to stop the run. You got one on one matchups on the outside playing off coverage. Quick little throw. That's the same exact throw that was a little late on the third down. That ended up incomplete. It was a rhythm on time. And those are some easy completions on first and second down when defenses are loading the box to stop the run. So scores in progress go by. Very busy night. Chris Sims are with us, keeping an eye on everything to Notre Dame opponents, Michigan and Northwestern. In a good one over at Evanston. Notre Dame shows pressure. It was blocked, and Love's got space. Bryce Love up the middle, taking off, and Love is gone. Touchdown, Stanford. Notre Dame brought the pressure. Love patiently found the space and takes it the distance. Hello. Alohi Gilman from depth at the safety position is coming. Right now, it's a good good numbers for Stanford, but here comes the extra guy. Great pickup on the block by Herbert. And he's off and running. I tell you, Bryce Love, every time he touches the ball, the defense corner is going to hold his breath. Nate Herbig with a terrific block and pro football focus grading. He's the top rated Stanford offensive player, and you see why. What a pickup he had there. Jet Toner. And the extra point, Bryce Love to the end zone. We saw it a lot last year. Just the third time this season, the 27th time in his fabulous career. Stanford responds, and we're tied at seven. Ben and the Steelers, Super Bowl champion quarterbacks. We'll start it with Football Night in America, 7 Eastern time. Sunday Night Football kicks off 8.20. Here on NBC and the Ravens coach John Harbaugh congrats to his daughter Allison who committed to the Notre Dame women's lacrosse team. Ravens sending out that week this year that women's lacrosse team continuing to build and get strong great lax tradition here in South Bend. Kevin Corrigan's men's team has been to the NCAA's 13 straight years. Big sport here on campus. A returnable kick Michael Young from the five. Stanford down there to cover it and Young won't get out to the 20 yard line. So it'll be a long field. We have a penalty marker thrown. Just right past the spot where the Cardinal kicked it off. And rare to see a kickoff return. This year with Stanford kicking 21 kickoff 17 have been touchbacks. Offside. Kicking team number 15. Five yard penalty added to the end of the run. First down. Let's go back to the touchdown, Doug. Well, Stanford does what Stanford does. They like to get big on you. They put an extra offensive lineman on the field. Every Hamilton 74 on the right side. But it was actually Nate Herbert's block. He picks up the safety blitz and he feels his man go away and he looks up the field, picks up the extra defender. Springs Bryce Love. The power running team getting it done there. So back to work from the Irish and the carry for Dexter Williams. That's two yards to the 25 yard line. He just ruined his average. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> he had the uh, 45 yard touchdown on his opening play of the season. As we said, it's the first four games. There is no Jafar Armstrong for the Irish tonight, the sophomore who has five rushing touchdowns to lead the team out with a knee injury. Be out for a couple of weeks. Here is Williams again. Across the 40 to the 43. Frank Bunkham was waiting to stop him. But Williams, he's been in the garage ready to roll. And he is hitting the road hard. This was all Dexter Williams because Nate Wisher 82 is going to be pulling. He misses his block. Williams still steps through and says, see you later. Gets upfield. Great quickness explosion. The 44 yard line, just a three man rush. So eight in coverage. Brooks got nobody open. They'll take off. And they'll get very close to a first down at the 48 yard line. A pickup of eight. I like his calm and his poise. Little pump fake wants to go up the seam. It's not there. He felt there was no rush. Took his time, surveyed the field. Then he's athletic enough to make something out of it. 
Philly Alfieri peeking in off the edge there. He's waiting for Williams, but Dexter gets the first down to the 41-yard line. He was limited by injury last year. Did carry for 360 total yards. Of course, with Josh Adams, there wasn't a lot of carries to go around for other players. But Williams is a guy who does have that explosiveness, and we've seen it on his first few here tonight. Book slant. Boykin with the grab from the 34 yard line. The first down pickup of a half dozen. How about that catch? Boykin just snatched that with his hands. A little low throwing out front. He, he was kind of afraid of getting smacked coming over the middle, so he just put the brakes on and reaches down with the hands. Just great job. Hand catches. Reaching mm -hmm. for the ball, trusting your hands. Ten different Notre Dame receivers caught balls last week. Part of the impact of the quarterback change. Book has time. Shot play down the field. Chase Claypool goes up. And did he catch it all? He almost caught the ricochet as Pulse and Adebo and Claypool were going at him. This is what we're talking about tonight. There are going to be a lot of these opportunities. Claypool, big, tall receiver, going up strong. Adebo is a great defense back. Made like three or four great plays at the end of the game against Oregon last week. And Claypool pulls it away. Stays with it on the ground, almost comes up. <laughs> wow. Ian Book thought for a minute he had his fourth touchdown pass of the season. Third and three field goal from here is 49 50 yards and trying to get the first down with Jones. He'll be denied. So at the 33, it'd be a 50 yard attempt with Yoon. So you see Brian Kelly say, go, 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 go. The Irish are going to go for it here on fourth down. Fourth and about two yards. There are gray areas when coaches map out their plan of go for it, kick a field goal, field position where you are, but there are areas coaches have to make the decision. You saw the decisiveness with Brian there. Alert play action here on fourth and two. Four tight ends. Good call, Doug. There it is. And there's Cole Komet making the grab at the 13-yard line in front of Malik Antoine. First down, Notre Dame. Komet just pulled that ball away. The defense was full, but the safety position, Antoine, stays there and has a chance to make a play on the ball. Komet just goes up strong and pulls it away. Big, tall receivers being strong with their hands. Gain of 19, Williams is the back. Book keeps it. The bubble screen was covered, so he runs it for no gain. Stanford was uh, ready for that. Gabe Reed. Tracking down the Irish quarterback, Reed from American Fork, Utah, on the stop. The stop. Good opening quarter. Welcome to those of you who watch Michigan rally and beat Northwestern in Evanston. That's a trip the Irish will be making coming up in November. Trying to get to 5 0 before the trip to Blacksburg and Virginia Tech next Saturday. Back scoring drives all even at seven it's in the hands of Avery Davis on the edge and Davis the speedy back converted quarterback takes it to the six getting out on the perimeter he's got his receivers out there working for him Avery Davis out of the backfield does a great job but watch 83 Claypool stay with his block watch this stay after him stay after him stay after him put him on the ground Claypool you see on special teams as well. He makes big impact plays. Notre Dame changed personnel, so they allow Stanford to do the same. Three tight ends on third and two, and Book back up top. End zone! Wisher hands on! Touchdown Notre Dame! Nick Wisher! He comes across in motion, and 15 Prince gets fooled and heads to the flat and they double the guy in the flat and there's Wisher all by himself. Nice snatch. Reached up and grabbed it with both hands. The ball almost sailed over said look at his fingertips. That's one thing we see we come to practice often doing so many of the home games and Nick Wisher has a terrific set of hands and the speed and velocity the revolutions on that ball from Book and Wisher hauled it in. Justin Yoon for the extra point. Number two on the Irish all-time scoring list. 
has added two so far. Last three drives, touchdowns. Wisher with his second touchdown catch. And the Irish back on top, back in 30. The touchdown, he also has four rushes for 16 yards. And Nick Wisher, the graduate student from Midlothian, Illinois, grabs a touchdown for the second week in a row. Two last year. Doug, we were both kind of sensing maybe a defensive struggle a little bit. <laughs> now it feels like everybody's taking the jacket off, loosen the tie. Dig in here. Turn it loose. <laughs> Play loose and relax and go get him. I'm waiting to see some of the Stanford receivers and tight ends go up for those same type of plays that Claypool was trying to go after. Jonathan Doerr, this is going to be caught at the goal line. And Cameron Scarlett will bring it out. And Chase Claypool, the starting receiver. We mentioned his special teams prowess earlier with the tackle. And KJ Costello will get it going at the 16 yard line. I don't think I've given Costello enough credit yet for some of the things he does at the line of scrimmage. I mean, they run a true NFL style offense where you've got to run check to run check. And with the extra tight ends or extra linemen, you get multiple, multiple looks in the front, so you really got to be on top of protections and the run game, and he does a great job. Looks like Peyton Manning up there directing traffic. Well, it goes without saying, some of these Stanford kids are so smart. Terrific academic institution. He's a political science major, and he's got a wristband full of plays. <laughs> you better be smart to pick them out and get the right ones and get everybody in line. Love with the carry. Bryce Love's going to gain four to the 20 as this first quarter comes to an end. Good start to this one. After one, Notre Dame 14, Stanford 7. Back to Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. Glad you're with us on Saturday night. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC, presented by Michigan. Tonight's aerial coverage is being brought to you by the unexpected energy of Exxon Mobil. Mike Tirico, Doug Flutie, Catherine Tappan, Terry McCauley, our rules analyst in the booth. Rob Highland, Pierre Musa, our great team. They're leading the way downstairs in the truck. Quarter two begins. We've had touchdowns on the last three possessions. 14-7 Notre Dame in this matchup of top ten teams to end September. Quarter starts at second and five. Tillery got in the face of Costello, but he hangs in there and completes it to our Sega Whiteside. First down at the 28-yard line. Ninety nine Tillery a little slap maybe a little bit of a head slap there but he gets in and hurry on the quarterback he's a hit on the quarterback he has been phenomenal all year long especially in the run game. Jerry Tillery three sacks so far this season you mentioned a consistent force inside against the run Costello's heating up he started over three the juniors in his last five passes. 28 a lot of bodies left and everybody heading that way to lead the pack from love turns the corner and Bryce loves to the 35 yard lines where they'll mark him three shy of the first down tell you what he's got a burst because Tavon Coney number four comes running through cleanly he stutter steps a little bit and just outruns him to the corner and turns the corner He's Pure got really speed. Good cornering speed too. Like when uh, he, he holds the rail there. He's yeah. Coming around that edge instead of falling out of bounds, <laughs> tripping over himself like what I would. Yeah, he. I'll tell you what, he is just so explosive. He's got it all. Let's move it. Little bit early on the right tackle. Yep. On the right tackle, 18 ball. Offense number 75, five yard penalty, still first down. It's almost like he thought he lined up a little too close to the line and had to back up six. <laughs> Just to get ready, it's a Stanford team that averages six penalties a game. Notre Dame only averages four. Two disciplined teams, well coached teams as well. Can't spend enough time around David Shaw. What a terrific uh, influence he is on these players. Brian Kelly has great respect for how Stanford's program is built. David Shaw the same. Both administrations, institutions, football teams love going against each other. Costello shot play down the field. Hunter Sego, H. No, check that. It's Osiris St. Brown with the catch. Inside the 35. He's going to go all the way down to the 25 yard line for a 45 yard pickup. Osiris St. Brown on the ground. 
just a switch release and blows by on his release, and he's gone. Expecting a switch and put the feet in the ground first. Just a fraction of a second was Jalen Elliott. He like was expecting another receiver to come underneath and hesitate it, and now all of a sudden he was five yards behind. And Notre Dame fans know the St. Brown family so well. Equinemius St. Brown was here for three years, now with the Green Bay Packers. And now Osiris St. Brown, Equinemius' brother with the grab there. Slant caught by Irwin, hit hard. But a first down for Trent Irwin working underneath Osmar Bilal. Costello's running the show. He really, he's, he's in total control. Those under routes, he, he felt off the play action. The linebacker level steps up, boom, little easy completion. The ball to corner route, he sees what's happening right away. Good decisions. He's still dying. This is the area of the field now where if you get a single high safety and there's an extra guy in the box, it's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. These are the jump ball areas for the outside receivers. Sanford's going to take a timeout here. You know. Lead the play clock a little bit and slow everything down and get a timeout time here. Out. Get the right play off that card in the, the red zone. Second and short, and we're back in 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Second. Second. Offensive coordinator when Jim Harbaugh was there, then took over and has uh, been a part of Stanford football for 21 years of his life. He's uh, found a good quarterback here in KJ Costello, who became the starter during November of last year. One thing he does, he plays a bunch of games against good teams. This is the eighth start he's had against the team that's ranked. So the depth of the Pac-12, the quality of the Stanford schedule, a lot of big-time games. He's played well. Second and one here, looking Enzo, putting it up top with a lot of contact and a flag throw. Arcega, Whiteside, and Pride were tied up, and this is going to be on Notre Dame and on Troy Pride. And the back end of it looked like our single wide side was bringing down pride. Pass interference. Defense. 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And we have to distance. You need to see the play first here to see the beginning of the contact. Well, the way, the way Notre Dame wants to play this is to stay underneath the receiver and create a little contact, but he's just got a full grip on and fighting through him, shoved him to the ground, and it's yep. it's an easy, easy call for the official. But Notre Dame wants to stay underneath because the Stanford receivers in past weeks have always just kind of made a little contact, turned around and boxed out. The ball is underthrown high, and he just goes up and makes a play. So Notre Dame would like to stay under that route, make the throw go up and over. And the flag was thrown in the end zone for the infraction occurring in the end zone, not earlier in the route. So the ball will be put at the two-yard line, and it's first and goal Stanford. And they bring a whole mess of big people like they usually do. With Reagan Williams, the fullback, leading the way. The pitch to Love. And the Irish were waiting for that one. Tillery, Kareem, bunch of folk over there. A well, lot of big offense. But hey, when was the last time number 54 went in motion? When did you have a 54 go in motion, coach? Stanford. <laughs> Dalen Hayes stays home, keeps contained. Actually, the last time Stanford was here in, in Bryce Love's first start, this exact play was a touch, his first touchdown. Costello on the boot, throws it to Love, turns up field. What a play by Drew Tranquil. Tranquil comes up, makes a nice tackle coming off of this to the right. He's flying up to make the play, but I'll tell you what, 84 Parkinson had a step to the corner and had a chance for a touchdown. Great reaction up, sure tackle on Love. He commits, man. When he comes downhill, he's all out. Play clock running down. White side down the bottom, one on one. Stanford has to take another timeout. Little play action. Parkinson was running to the corner, but there might have been a guy seconds. in the throwing lane, so it might have been a tricky throw to drop up over the top. You give it to Bryce Love, and Drew Tranquil comes, Tranquil comes flying up to make that hit. 
It's a fascinating part of the field, Doug, in the red zone because of the size of Stanford's receivers. They use their tight ends 6'5, 6'7. That's uh, not even mentioning 6'3 and JJ Arcega Whiteside. So their options down here are not just play action for those boots or Bryce Love running. When they get the matchup they want on the outside, they use that size advantage so often, especially with number 19. And 84 Parkinson is the 6'7 guy. There's Whiteside. And if the defense decides to take that away, you get the one on one matchup with the tight end in the middle of the field. Right now, you got both corners are one on one on the outside. Arcega Whiteside, the very top of your screen. Third and goal. Costello looking that way, going that way. Arcega Whiteside pulls it down from Julian Love, and it's a touchdown for Stanford. That is what he does. Eighth touchdown of the season. So Notre Dame wants to stay underneath it. Whiteside doesn't let him. He keeps a relationship where he kept him on his inside hip anyway. And then the ball's put just a little to the outside. All it is is a box out, like basketball. Put it to my outside hip. Here, here you go. Here's my relationship. Leaning on each other, leaning on each other. Ball to the outside. Great ball position on the throw by Costello. He trusts his receiver. And White, our Sega Whiteside goes up and makes a play. They run those fades differently. They don't run to the back corner, to the back pylon. It's just a box out. It's basketball. Play. There's a lot of hand fighting both ways. Jet Toner adds the extra point. Four drives, four touchdowns. On a roll here, and so is J.J. Arcega Whiteside. Gonna have a lot more of these this year. Touchdown catch number eight of the year. All tied at 14. By Michelin, a better way forward. By Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And by Pringles. The great coaches in this rivalry, including Newt Rockney and Pop Warner, who were the coaches when these teams met in the Rose Bowl nearly a century ago. Newt Rockney's statue outside sees many a picture taken. Folks come to South Bend. And he came tonight, he came to a good game. Great setting. As we said, the temperature of the 50s, that first full week of fall. Terrific start to this one, all even at 14. We're going to talk about all that hand fighting in the end zone because fans get frustrated when they watch it. We're going to bring an expert in to discuss that after this kickoff by Jake Bailey. And it's going to be a touchback. Terry McCauley, our rules analyst at NBC. Terry, why don't you see more flags or pass interference? on these jump balls with our Sega White side. Yeah, Mike, this is a great no call by the officials. They body up each other. They're both seeking out contact. There's no overt grab or restriction by the receiver. There's no extension and separation by the receiver. This is just the, the, the best man wins kind of thing here. So one guy not one guy doing it, the other guy not doing it would probably be a pass interference call, but since they're both doing it, it's okay. Absolutely. Interesting. Uh, that's what they work on, and Stanford's so good at it. Dexter Williams, the first down carry for seven yards. Doug Flutie, do you like the way I, that's called? I just think there's so much contact. Like right away, Julian Love is grabbing across. And so to counter that, Arcega Whiteside has two arms on his arm to push off and grab. It, it just, and yeah, nobody's getting an advantage, so, so there's no call on the play. But boy, there's a lot of contact. Two yard run here for Dexter Williams. It'll bring up third and one. Tovon Swan, who's from Greenwood, Indiana, about 150 miles from here, south of Indianapolis. Gets a chance to come back to his home state and make a tackle there against the Irish. Notre Dame has scored touchdowns on its last two drives, and Williams won't get it. Book will. First down to the 35 yard line. Gabe Reed with the tackle. To the fifth carry for Ian Book tonight. Reed does a great job of staying home, staying flat to take the angle, but Book's quick enough to at least pick up the first down. But that's a that's a disciplined play where you stay instead of going vertical to the quarterback where he can outrun you, you stay flat and run with him down the line. First down pass, Reed chasing, Book spins away, gets away, and gets about three yards before he gets. Out of bounds. You mentioned the athleticism, a little cross player. 
also in his high school days. So you see Ian Book, a guy who grew up a basketball fan in the Sacramento area. Big fan of Mike Bibby and the Sacramento Kings. Here's Catherine. Well, Mike, I spoke to Ian Book's high school coach at Oak Ridge, Eric Cavalier. He told me that tonight there's a watch party in Book's hometown of El Dorado Hills at the local restaurant El Dorado Saloon and Grill. The owner, Ron Martin's son, Brock Martin, played with Ian growing up, and it's a proud community cheering him on tonight, Mike. Oh, Gabe Reed got to him there. They didn't like that moment, but they have seen a, a lot of success from Book. And we've seen a lot of Reed here in this first half. A loss of nine on that play. Three straight plays that Reed has had an opportunity coming off the edge. He comes underneath and gets there, and this time wraps him up and holds him. I'll tell you, that was a nice little slide move, but he's had three straight shots to get him. He's one for three. He got right past Liam Eichenberg, the left tackle. He got beat across his face because he came down hard. There was a blitz coming off the edge. Avery Davis takes the check down, blocking downfield for the Irish receivers. And Davis gets to the 37 yard line, nowhere near the first down. So on third and 17, the Irish will get stopped. A little quiet back there at uh, Ian Book's old haunt in uh, California outside of Sacramento. It's really cool to see. The hometown folks who knew Ian Book when, knew him back in the day, getting together uh, to watch him uh, in this big spot. That Notre Dame quarterback in such a big job. He's heard from Joe Thies, he's heard from Lou Holtz, and now all Irish fans will be talking about him week in, week out. This guy's made a difference, Tyler Newsom. That wasn't his best punch, but gets a good roll and will be down inside the 15. All the way down to the 10 yard line. So 53 on the kick for Newsom. Halfway through the second. Number seven and number eight. Ah. First quarter, Trace McSorley airing it out. Jawan Johnson rising and making the crazy one-handed grab. That sets up this, a 34-yard field goal. Penn State has since added another, and they lead Ohio State 6 to nothing in the second quarter. All right, Liam, defense is digging in there. Hard to move it down the field. Keep an eye on that one. Liam and Chris Sims join you at halftime. Stanford scored on its last two drives. And the Cardinals take over at their own 10. Too high safety should run the ball. KJ Costello does just that. The Heisman runner up from a year ago, Bryce Love, gets one, maybe two yards. Jonathan Bonner on the stop. Bonner, one of the starters on Clark Lee's defense. It's a defense that has uh, opened eyes as this season's gone along here, Doug. Okay, I had a chance to talk to him before the game down on the sideline. He was a Guys were fired up. The energy level was great this week. Last night in meetings, everybody was dialed in. He was very excited about it, except for when Bryce Love touches the ball. That's right, Doug, because <laughs> he has to hold his breath. Yeah, yeah that, that's what he said. Every time he touches the ball, I'm going to hold my breath because you know he's one step away from going a long way. He's come close to some big runs this year. Four man rush. Costello got rid of it incomplete. In the other hand, tight end. Got third down coming up. That ends a nine for nine streak with that Caden Smith drop. Well, that's a ball Caden Smith can catch and, and does all the time, and it would have created a easy, you know, much easier third down situation. Now you're sitting at third and long. You don't have to lock up one on one on the outside. You can go with your four man rush and play a little cover. It's been a bend but don't break Irish type defense so far. But they need to get off the field more on third down. Stanford going to run it down here with Love. Got out of one tackle, not the other one. Even though it's third down, they were looking at 21st. Tavon Coney finished off the deal, struck his pose, and fourth down coming up. So Tavon Coney on the inside, mirroring Bryce Love, fighting off his block and comes up after penetration by Julian Acquire in the backfield. That was key. Because they did have numbers up front that time because Notre Dame was playing coverage. Coney's been all over the field early in this game. There's Fink back for Jake Bailey's kick. Great kick. Wow. Beauty 65 yards. Took Fink all the way back to the 21. Space to make a return. He got past him. Flag is down as Fink takes off across midfield into Stanford territory at the 40. Seven yard line, but as we said, a marker came down that looks like it will negate this 33 yard return by Fink. 
I believe it was 35 Bracey. He just had his hands on the guy. I don't know if he really shoved it. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 35. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. That is Tariq Bracey, the freshman. So instead of the Irish taking it over in Stanford territory, they'll be back inside their own 20 when we come back. Absolutely. <laughs> Season premiere Saturday Night Live coming up. The man in the middle, Adam Driver, the actor, is the guest host, Adam Driver, from Mishawaka, Indiana. We went to Mishawaka High School six miles from here. So it's a local South Bend tie to start Saturday Night Live's great season. Live for you tonight here on NBC. After your local news, a run of three to get the drive going for the Irish. <laughs> Jones, or rather, Dexter Williams, I should say, off the bottom of the don't, don't count out that other team. Which one was which? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Easily confused. Williams, again, waiting for the block. First down to the 30 yard line. Robert Haynes, he came over to clear a path. The chains move. We get inside of five minutes here in this first half. The whole right side of the line hold there, both hands and Kramer. And, and they're doing a great job of just being patient behind those blocks, allowing it to happen. Well, the first down passes for the Irish thus far tonight. They're going to keep it on the ground here with Williams. If it's not broke, don't fix it, run it again. Both. Two plays in a row. The, the Kramer and Hainsey, the right side of that line, pulling. He looks, he looks explosive, doesn't he? He sure does. You know he's anxious to get back on the field after being out for those first four games. Avery Davis continues to expand his role. Again, he was a quarterback when he was recruited. Five in the pattern here for Book. And he'll take off. And Ian Book will have the first down to the 42 yard line. Great patience. He really didn't have anything. He's looking to his left, and he's sitting there. But watch 71 Alex Bars go look for work and clean it up inside so he takes off north and south. Great pickup there. Quarterbacks who run love that. Right to Miles Boykin. Been busy in the first half. Boykin to the 48-yard line. It was Boykin and Book who connected on that big play against LSU. Boykin seems to be a bit shaken up on the field there after that tackle. So to does uh, Elijah Holder, Stanford corner, both get up. <laughs> and the official's going to do a good job here, make sure Boykin gets to the sideline, gets looked at for a moment. And Kevin Austin, the freshman from Fort Lauderdale, will check in. Boykin with four of the seven completions from Book thus far. First look wasn't there, so Book. Heads to the sideline, and there'll be no gain. It's Sean Barton. Barton. They're going to knock him out. Third down coming up. I was expecting Austin. He, he pulled the ball to throw a quick slant, and it just ended up not being there. I don't know if Austin didn't run the route, but uh, left the book hanging just a little bit. Third foul. Paulson to Debo, Stanford's. Really emerging sophomore corner is going to be up at the top of the screen, number 11, covering Claypool. Book rolling that way, throws on the run, incomplete, was broken up, and a great play coming over by Joey Alfieri. Fans wanted to call as Kevin Austin was the intended receiver, but instead, Stanford will send on the Notre Dame punting unit. Alfieri, oh, he covers some ground now. He's, you know, he's running with a wide receiver all the way across. He gets a little tug there, but no call on the play. You know, it's, he's reaching, starts to turn, but the ball's already there. So Tyler Newsom will punch it away for the Irish. Let it bounce. And it'll be a touchback. 52 for the gross, just a net of 32. And Stanford with 311. And only one timeout left will take over. Try to take the lead into the locker room. Time report coming up here from South Bend. Liam McHugh, Chris Sims, 
We'll take a look at Ian Book in the spotlight. We'll have the scores and highlights from around college football. Update that Penn State Ohio State game. And we'll talk about the Ryder Cup. Look ahead to tomorrow morning here on NBC, 6 a.m. Eastern. The Ryder Cup singles matches, the U.S. work to do. State Farm halftime report coming up. By the way, these two institutions have terrific golf courses on their campuses. Just let me throw that in. The Warren course here. Flutie Tappan and I played. The course survived. Barely. Costello first down. Toss. That's Caden. Sorry. Kobe Parkinson, excuse me. The tight end across midfield for the first down. 32 to the six foot seven tight end. Beautiful back shoulder throw as they're, they're speeding up here, but just perfectly placed ball with a tall six seven receiver. Catch number nine on the year for Parkinson. Three of his first eight touchdowns. Costello contact, but the catch is made. 45 yard line. Single Whiteside's fourth grab of the night. Costello 11 to 15 thus far. I thought Stanford lined up him with the ball and didn't go fast. We'll jump into this. They have uh, had. An effective game throwing the ball so far. Costello, high percentage. Underneath the pass is intended for Parkinson, but incomplete as Tavon Coney stepped in front. Really nice job by Coney. Uh, you know, he's had an upfield route, comes off his man, comes under to make a play on that. And he's really proud of how he's developed in coverage as a linebacker. Yeah, and he's waiting for that day he gets an opportunity to catch that thing and go the other way and show off that he can be a running back. As he was in high school, he's a player who really took to Clark Lee when the now defensive coordinator was the linebackers coach last year. And he's emerged in an every down essential for the Irish D. Third and six, a lot of misdirection. Costello's going to bring it over incomplete. He's trying to get Michael Wilson ready to go. Drew Tranquil was standing, waiting, crushed him. And a drive of promise stops quickly for Stanford. Boy, Wilson was open early. If he just came out and threw it out there, but he's reading downfield first. Drew Tranquil closes in a hurry and so late with the throw that if Tranquil had cut the, gone in between, he was going the other way. He was there early enough to cut that off, but he knew he was late, so he's just going for the receiver. Wilson breaks up the play. Well, that misdirection is Smith, the tight end, was uh, streaking open, but then just at the last second, you saw the safety. And certainly Costello decided to come back to the safe throw. Bailey puts the nose down, try to get this one tough to catch. Fink lets it go, and the Cardinal can't stop it. They came so close to downing it at the one yard line. Instead, it'll be Notre Dame ball to 20. Looks like. The two players as Irwin was one of the two Stanford Cardinals. They're almost got each other's way a little bit. And they played hot potato with it. Just it's like infielders. You got it, I'll take it. Let it drop in between. There's two Just gunners who are very effective in Murphy and Irwin. Converged but couldn't collect. 203, Notre Dame. Full boat of timeouts. Ian Book throws the slant. It's caught. Gain of a dozen. Boykin with a grab for the fifth time in this half. What a difference. I mean, you're pinned down on the one yard line two minutes ago in the half. You're conservative with the ball. You're not going to take any chances. Now you're out at the 20. First down completion. You're off and running into the two minute offense. Five for 54 for Boykin. Book design run. And we'll take it to the 35 yard line. Just shy of the 36. First down pickup. Of three. So Notre Dame trying to do the old Patriots thing here. The thing Belichick loves to do score, halftime, get the ball back, and score again. Big momentum builder. Look on the out right there as Boykin makes the break. First down at the 46 yard line. It's not bad coverage. Holden's right there. He's playing off, so he breaks hard on the throw, but the timing and the placement of the ball is perfect. See if Stanford can get a pass rush, something they have been missing this year. It is uh, being given and being taken. The out in front of Holder. Boykin grabs seven of this first half. If you're efficient in the pass game, if there is off coverage, that is stealing to you as a quarterback and receiver. Right. Still off coverage again. 
Now Boykin a little deeper. And Boykin's got it again. He made a move. Boykin inside the 15 to the 12 yard line. Sean Barton saves a touchdown. 43 on the game. Boy, this time the corner didn't roll up. He rolls up. He stays short, so you hit the little short corner route right in between the safety. Beautiful ball placement again and timing. Irish walking it down the field, a minute one to go. Everything's covered. Book by and top. Got a block, taken off, and gets out of bounds. In game two on the play. 47 seconds, still a full complement of timeouts from Notre Dame. He's got the little fish hook move down where you start to step to the right and spin back out to the left. Love it. That was uh, Dylan out, Jackson Notre Dame. chasing him. 30 seconds. We see Book on the drive. This meeting 33 between these teams. Our top performance brought to you by Mercedes Benz takes you back to the first one. New Year's Day, 19 and 25. New Rockney's team and Pop Warner's team. Notre Dame, Stanford, Elmer Lee, now shining Stanford Journey Nevers, scoring three touchdowns, including two on interception returns. Irish finished 10 and 0. First of 11 national championships in the Rose Bowl. New Year's Day, 1925, the first ever meeting between Stanford and Notre Dame. The only other one when both were undefeated, as they are here tonight. I had to leave that game early. Did I, yeah, I missed the I, end. Practice? Yeah. Do you have a baseball game to pitch? Yeah, I have something. <laughs> People don't know, by the way, Flutie still plays baseball. Not softball, baseball. He threw 110 pitches in a playoff game. You're, you're crazy. You're, you are a kid at heart, and you know I, I think you relate to Ian. Oh, I love, yes. Because Ian looks six foot. He's not six five. He's not out of the quarterback manual of height, weight, and everything else. But he just makes plays. He played other sports: lacrosse, basketball. He loves the game. He's a he's a gym rat, and I just I like the way he plays the game. He's got Tony Jones next to him. It's second and eight. Five options to throw. Book gets away from the rush. Book throws. Into Holding defense number 10. The penalty is declined. The result of the play, touchdown. Just sliding and moving inside the pocket. Tommy Crater on, uh, Kramer on Alfieri almost gets a hold here, a little takedown. But great shifting of the feet, moving. And watch the body. Just a little snap of the hips. Throw back from the left to the right. Little turn the hips. Open up. Sidearm that thing in there. That's being an athlete. It's a short stop. Yep. Pivot and throw. Fire. And good awareness with the eyes upfield. Just in you. Points tonight, a dozen points away from number one on the all time list. 21 14, for the second touchdown toss of the night. Threat using that size and speed at 6 4. And dug a, a terrific drive that, as you made a great point, didn't start at their own one, but started at the 20 because the Cardinal couldn't down it, and it might have cost them. Yep, absolutely. The ball should have been down at the one. They make a mistake, they let it get away, ball goes in the end zone. That's a 19 yard there. Now you got a comfort zone, you're out there near the 20, and you complete your first pass. You're off and running, and you're into your two minute offense instead of being conservative, and, and it's the difference in putting seven points on the board before the half. Jonathan Doerr kicking for the Irish. More of a line drive, but will not be returned. Touchback. And let's go back to Book on that last drive. That started out, he completes a couple of balls that are rhythm type throws the slant the start to drop first play of a two minute drive is always the biggest these off coverage perfectly placed perfectly timed out rounds and then because there's a rolled corner that's probably a read route that might have been like an out round but because it's a rolled corner it converts to the short corner round and you beat the cover two then he becomes an athlete scrambling around moving around and this snap of the hips and throw exceptional 
Ripped out. 90% of the coach is out. No, 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 don't throw that. Don't, don't. It's a dangerous little move, but he's comfortable. He's confident. And I've, I've said about him before. He commits to every throw. He believes what he sees and commits to the throw. Of game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. 39 seconds left. Now first and 15. David Shaw's team only with one timeout left. Let's see what their plan is here. They're moving the ball effectively, throwing it. Doesn't hurt to put three shots up downfield or start with the screen to Bryce Love. Costello hit and sacked. Almost lost the ball as Tillery got sack number four on the season. Just a great push by 99, Jerry Tillery. Timeout. That's Nate Herbig, their best Second offensive line. He's just putting them in the backfield, pushing them past the quarterback, and then getting to the quarterback. Yeah, okay, good timeout taken by Notre Dame. They're going to force Stanford to make some plays here. 22 Three seconds left. We're back in third. 30 seconds. Three zero. I build machine learning models to help physicians fight cancer, and one day. With 22 on the clock out, here before halftime. Third and a half. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Us a chance to remind you that tonight's aerial coverage is being brought to you by the unexpected energy of Exxon Mobil. We were here to practice the other night, Thursday evening, and Brian Kelly reminded his Notre Dame players as the typical get your mind right for the game, all that stuff. They only have two more games here. They'll play Pittsburgh, they'll play Florida State, their game against the now surprising Syracuse. Will be at Yankee Stadium at the end of the season, so taking care of their home field, the goal of an undefeated season at home for the Irish, uh, really comes down to the next uh, really two quarters, to be honest, the way Pitt and Florida State have played. You know, four, four of your first five games at home, the rest are on the road. That's a tough haul. You know, no matter what, your difficult games are going to be behind you soon, as far as your higher ranked teams and, and the games that potentially could be the most difficult. False start. Offense, number 74, five yard penalty. Still third down. That's Devery Hamilton, who has returned, did not play the game against Oregon. You know, David Shaw's team has the conference in the Pac-12. It's got the big win over the Ducks, and they'll have a game against Washington coming up. For Notre Dame, the margin for error, as you know, is limited because of not having a conference championship route. It's Love going left, struck out, got to stay in bounds. He does. The Irish can't stop the clock. And the Cardinals shut her down and take it to the locker room for halftime. And as we said, the Irish get the ball first, so that score stopped the chance to come back to start the second half with some points. Very important for Notre Dame. Damon Hayes shaking up at the end of that first half. They'll look at it. 21 14 Notre Dame, Liam McHugh, Chris Sims, State Farm halftime report coming up after these messages and a word from New York, the local station. Schedule that was daunting for a while there is a little bit less daunting. They're still tough games, and if they're important, they'll be difficult. But this might be the best team Notre Dame plays the rest of the year. It's a huge half of football. Book on the roll, throwing it away and incomplete. And it'll be third down. No receiver in the area. His book rolled out to the right. Pass was late. Yeah, he has a chance underneath, but because of the pass rush, he gets flushed early. Getting out of there and just good job throwing the football away. He would have had a receiver coming underneath Claypool. Yep. Stanford looks a little more aggressive in the front to start the second half. Penetration on the run plays and again pressure on that one on the pass. Here comes the pressure. They bring the blitz. Book escapes to his left and just throws it away. Was it intercepted? It looked like the player was out of bounds or Stanford. An incomplete. Book. Instead of taking the sack yardage, flipped it for He's out of the tackle box, so got it over the line of scrimmage. Paulson Adebo is over there with the pressure. Fourth down. So Stanford's decided to turn it up. It's pressure the quarterback. Dexter Williams misses his blitz pickup. Book on the corner. This is the only way he could get rid of it, so he shovels it to throw it out of bounds, but he number left it in bounds, and this is a fraction from being intercepted. Adebo is the player Adebo. dove over there to try to make the interception Trent Irwin's back deep to receive for Stanford he's normally number two 
but he puts on 38 so uh, there aren't two 38s on the field at once. Tyler Newsom with a very high kick that will be fielded at the 23 yard line and Irwin turns it up and he'll be brought down at the 33 NCAA has got a lot of issues one of them is double numbers in football games and guys changing numbers during games it's preposterous different story different time speaking for all the announcers in the country. Let's talk about Bryce Love because this is a guy who had every chance in the world to go to the NFL because your career is made when you're number two and have the kind of season he had out of Wake Forest High School in North Carolina. We know about his medical background wants to be a pediatrician does stem cell research. He backed up Christian McCaffrey. McCaffrey gets hurt the game here two years ago. He makes his debut. It's a splash with 129 rushing yards and then the season 21 18 second in the Heisman race to Baker Mayfield. And now he comes back. It's this gain of two. Doug, it's about half as many yards per carry this year compared to last year. Everybody gets off the bus wanting to stop number 20. Absolutely. I mean, it's almost exactly half. But, you know, he's doing his part by making teams defend the run. And it's opening up the pass game for Stanford. They've got big receivers. They can make plays in the pass game. He's just doing his part last night talking to him. You still know he's going to bust that one long run here or there. Every time he touches the ball, he's a threat to go to distance. He was patient and did it in the Oregon game last week. Toss. A lot of folks coming his way to help, but the Irish shoot the gap, and Osmar Bilal takes it away. Big loss on the play. Great angle by Bilal. He took an angle to turn this thing in. He comes running from the outside, and he's got Coney coming from the inside, but he cut across the face to contain and made sure Bryce Love doesn't get to the edge. 22. Bilal has played this rover position and really done a good job for the Irish this year. Out of Ben Davis High School in Indianapolis, the senior forces third in a dozen. Four in the pattern, now five. K.J. Costello rolls and throws. It's no first down as Caden Smith is stopped with a gain of four, but a flag is down back by where the quarterback was. Holding. Offense, number 75. 10-yard penalty. Replay third down. Second foul for ATL. They declined that penalty. Guys. There's no way you're taking that penalty. Paul 75 right in front there. Correct. He's got his hand underneath. And it's when Notre the Dame defender tries to pull away. You know, you can grip in there, grab a hold when you're blocking, but as the defender tries to pull away, you got to release. That was an amazing throw and catch. I know it wasn't a conversion, but it really was. <laughs> and the referee didn't ask the sideline if they wanted the penalty or not. So obviously it was declined. So it'll be back to back three and outs. Notre Dame and Stanford to start this. Third quarter, and the Irish will kick it away. Jake Bailey almost quote unquote outkicked the coverage last time and gave Chris Fink room to run. This one, Fink will fair catch at the 24 yard line. That's where the Irish will take over. Just under three minutes gone in the third. Two undefeated teams meeting in South Bend. Irish by seven. The all new Lexus ES. Is stolen. Notre Dame football is brought to you by Verizon. Now go mix and match family unlimited plans. By U.S. Bank, the power of possible. By State Farm, talk to an agent today at 1 800 State Farm. And by Jersey Mike's Subs, be a sub above. Some pretty good names for good players over the years, part of. Notre Dame Stanford history including Andrew Luck the Heisman runner up great to see him back on the field downstate here in Indiana for the Colts and KJ Costello and Ian Book yet to be a part of the 33rd meeting between these two teams first down it's a run Dexter Williams getting across the 30 yard line to the 31 so they continue to use Williams here coming off his best summer in terms of physical conditioning attention to detail and after the four games out big impact here tonight first down to the 38 yard line Paul Williams there and Sean Barton's inside to make the tackle for the card in the run game going Alex Barr 71 left guard nice little pull on the play before this he had Hainsey pulling from the other side 
Hainsey didn't get there in time. Dexter just hit the hole first. This time he waits for his block from bars up through there. Doing a good job getting angles. Three in a row. And that one's for a yard or so. So Brandon Wimbush, who was a not just the starting quarterback, but a winner at 12 and 3 and very effective. He'd run for 1,000 yards and 16 career touchdowns. If that's not there, yes, Book can scramble, but he can't take it big play like Wimbush. So the guys up front need to do their job if the run game is going to continue to be a part of what the Irish do. No doubt about it. And the zone read game was such a big deal with Wimbush and the, the ability to have big plays out of that. Boykin, back shoulder throw, incomplete. Elijah Holder was all over him in coverage. It'll be third down coming up. With Wimbush, there were a lot of designed quarterback runs. With Ian Book, yeah, he runs a little bit of that, but it's more the off the scramble, holding on to the ball to make the play down the field in the pass game. And let's just say this about the individual, a kid who is loved and respected by his team. We asked Brian Kelly, how's he been? And he said, I grade him an A minus this week. His preparation has been excellent. He said if his week was an A grade, something would be wrong. But he was upset. He's down a little bit, but he didn't show it in his preparation. He prepared like he was the starter this week. A lot of credit to that young man handling that situation. Third and nine for Ian Book, chased by Reed. Throws complete. Fink turned to the field and got a first down. To the 45 for Chris Fink, the senior from Dayton, keeps this drive going with a gain of a 16 yards. Great job of extending the play, and Barton's drifting, drifting, finally has to commit to the quarterback. Boom, pulls the trigger, completion. Book keeping, running to the edge, and he pushed out of bounds by Joey Alfieri. And that last play, that's a basketball play. That's a draw defender to you, put it over his head. Is he going to back up? Is he going to come to you? Chip Long's been able to go a little bit deeper on that play card now and do some of the pass stuff that was set up runs and vice versa. Bounce to the outside this time for Tony Jones. He'll get the first down to get out of bounds at the 28 yard line. Irish on the move. Let's go down to Catherine. Like according to Chris Fink, the transition from Brandon Wimbush to Ian Book has been seamless. He told me this week that Book has a great comfort level with the offense, and his quiet confidence makes him a great leader. He said the biggest thing he saw with Book in their game against Wake Forest, his ability to finish in the second half, something he knows will be critical tonight if the Irish want to get the win, Mike. And part of him seamlessly taking over. It's a big spot in that locker room and beyond. Book in trouble here, gets rid of it, kept it alive. It's caught by Michael Young, dancing, trying to keep the loss to a minimum, and he'll lose two, maybe three yards. You got to keep everybody involved and together because you know the way things go during a season. You're probably going to need both quarterbacks. Yeah, maybe he shouldn't have pulled it here. Maybe made a mistake there. But now look at the athleticism, avoiding getting away. This is the most athletic three-yard loss of the day by both receiver and quarterback. It's tough, Doug. Uh, you, you know, you've uh, lived through these situations. It's a challenge for both individuals. No doubt about it. I mean, it is. Even the guy, the guy becoming the starter, you're walking on eggshells a little bit. Avery Davis out of the backfield with the release. Cannot get away from Sean Barton, who covered a lot of real estate to set up a third and long. And then Brandon Wimbush has been nothing but a winner. Class act. Continue to work hard. You've got to support the starter, but you're still going to be ready and prepared. And Brandon will. I mean, there'll be a situation where he's definitely needed at some point during this season. Hey, we saw the situation with Clemson. Kelly Bryant says he's going to transfer. Trevor Lawrence plays, gets hurt in the first half against Syracuse. And Chase Bryce bailed him out with that one big play on fourth down. Otherwise, Clemson's championship dreams would be over right now. Interesting dynamic. Credit to the individuals handling it for the moment here. Third and ten. Book out of traffic. Not going to get there. He'll be stopped at the 20. It's fourth and two. It's a seven point game right around the halfway mark of the third quarter. Brian Kelly's going to take the chance to go up two possessions. You like this decision? Absolutely. Kick the field goal, get the two possession lead. You got a nice drive. Stanford has definitely turned up the pressure, trying to bring a five man rush, trying to contain but push the pocket. And Ian Book is feeling that a little bit. So Justin, you will go for his sixth field goal on the season. It will be a 37-yard attempt. And Yoon out of the book hole. That's his 48th career field goal for the Fighting Irish. Third all-time in that list. He continues to move up. He's now nine points shy of the all-time Notre Dame scoring record.
Center before hosting the Bruins. Then at 10.30, it's a California clash. Anaheim visits San Jose. Wednesday night hockey begins this Wednesday on NBCSN. Mike, you're ready. Who is hosting that <laughs> show? Catherine, have fun in D.C. It'll be Thank a great night. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. As they raise the banner, and then we'll look forward to watching Eric Carlson. He was in Ottawa, not a lot of chances to see him. He's going to be in San Jose now. It's going to be a great opportunity to watch the Sharks coming up this year. Catherine and Liam and our NHL team ready to roll. All right, that's Bryce Love back there. Stanford wants to get something going. Will he get his hands on this kickoff? Yeah, Dora hit a line drive. So here comes Love from the three, looking for space up the middle of the field, and he's brought down at the 25 yard line well covered what about the matchup with JJ Arcego Whiteside and Julian Love for Notre Dame so this is going to be a physical matchup all night and Julian Love loves to get his hands on his receivers as much as possible the timing routes are the only things that are working you know when you put the brakes on the ball's out of a break but otherwise the up the field stuff the speed is not going to beat Julian Love he's going to be there it's those timing type throws where they might get a completion and then the jump ball in the end zone that are saying White side comes up with he's got four for 24 but the separation is really not happening not on the field for the opening part of this drive Julian Love has had a very very good year preseason second team All-America for the Irish AJ Costello under pressure gets rid of it under thrown and nearly intercepted Caden Smith the tight end did a good job he helped keep Jalen Elliott from what would have been Elliott's third interception of the year Kelly Kareem has the pressure on him, which forces a ball lobbed in the air. He overran it. He was running to where the ball should have been. And all of a sudden, because it was lobbed and, and a little late, he was behind him and he couldn't turn to make the play. He had a good break on the ball. If he put the ball in the right spot, I'm intercepting it, Coach. Right. And, and Doug, that's because of the pressure you mentioned with Kareem. He got in there and he didn't give Costello a chance to get that six foot five frame uncoiled to throw. Some space on the run. Bilal with the coverage on Smith that time. Incomplete. Nice, nice field by Costello in the pocket, sliding, moving, buying a little time. Throws a good ball, but Bilal's there and makes a beautiful play on the ball. Beautiful play getting his right arm across, knock this play down. Third down. Love is the back. Five in the pattern. Costello hits it through. And it's knocked down. Did the others come up with it? We're going to hit the ground. I thought initially that pressure by Julian Aquara knocked it out as a forward pass. Let's see what the call is on the field. Rolling on the field as a forward pass. Interception. Interception. Never hit the ground. Dalen Hayes has this ball hit him. Fun it bounced. It does. It, okay. It, it gets to the ground. That's he it. almost comes up with it. Like he had the chance here. There it is. Right there. I thought I saw that nose hit the ground. Hayes goes down. Ruled on the field a pick. So they'll look at it, stop the game, realize it's not. It'll be fourth down. But again, Doug, the edge pressure that Notre Dame has dialed up in big passing downs this year is part of the story of what this defense has been about. They, in the last few years, they really haven't had a pass rush. They yep, really right. have not. And this year, their front seven, their rotation of players in the D-line, they've got legitimate pass rushers, Dalen Hayes, Julian Aquar, and there's no doubt this ball touches the ground. You don't need to look at Terry, do you? I, I can look at Terry. <laughs> Terry, you want to comment on this? Can, I, 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 gotta, I, think, you know, I think you got this one nailed. I'm deferring I, to Terry on really everything. good. Because <laughs> this, is, this is awesome. I quit about three weeks ago. <laughs> you nailed it. <laughs> you know, you get, you get a guy who's been the referee of the Super Bowl three times, 20 years of NFL officiating, college supervisor for a decade. And, you need to look at him every time you, the ball bounces. You think he could make a call? <laughs> you know, I you know I messed with Terry one of his first games. Was it your first game? It was in your first year, Terry. It was my first year as a referee in 2001. I go to spike the ball at the end of the game. We're going to line up and kick a field goal against the Patriots. Right. 
and the ball slips out of my hand and goes sideways. It ends up being a fumble. He ruled it incomplete. They had to review that we lose five yards on the play, and we hit the crossbar on the field goal and don't make it. And that was his fault? Or your well, it was, uh, it, well, we both screwed it up. <laughs> 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 we both screwed it up. That, that's he missed. Why, <laughs> that's why we I'm glad to, we brought you both together. Did we have a replay at that time, Terry? It was That play was not reviewable. It is now. So, so, so it was blown NFL, dead. But it was, yeah. It and was it should have been a fumble rolling right. around. Correct. Right. We're talking because they're still talking again. <laughs> the communications with the Pac-12 officiating crew on the field, ACC for replay. So when it takes this long, you start thinking, did, did I did I miss something there? It looked like the ball clearly bounced, and then even when he came down on the ground, the ball was loose and free. The question might have been, is it a forward pass or a fumble? That would be the only other thing they could be talking about. I don't think there was any doubt that it was a forward pass. It, it seems like it just took him this long to get. After review, the pass was incomplete. Fourth down. Please reset the game clock to seven minutes, 42 seconds. 7.42. It's always the. Uh... Yeah, I think it took him that long to get the down, the distance, right. the time, everything else. Maybe could have done a little quicker. So it's all clear. So that's a fifth, third and out, three and out for Stanford, I should say. Notre Dame's had just one, and they've been really getting this Stanford offense off the field before they can gain momentum on a drive. Jake Bailey with the kick. Fink will late signal for the fair catch, but the Irish will take over at their own 25. Halfway through this third quarter, Notre Dame's biggest lead of the night. Against number 11 Washington Huskies and Miles Gaskin in control. It is 14 nothing late in the second quarter. Mike. Wow, great start for them. Jake Browning's become the all-time leader in passing yards in Washington history. Remember, Washington lost to Auburn. They may be as good as any other team in the Pac-12. Stanford will go to Seattle early November. Here they're in South Bend and watching Dexter Williams have a good night tonight. Injury for the Irish there, and Alex Barnes, their best offensive lineman, is down. He's the left guard for Notre Dame. He's starting different spots in the offensive line. Second team All America in the preseason. And immediate concern is Rob Hunt, the director of athletic training, comes out there as Barnes got bent back that left leg underneath him. Alfieri oh. falls right on him, Joey Alfieri. Just in the pile of players. Talking about the grading of players when you talk about offensive players and their grading thus far. Pro Football Focus, which does a, a terrific job of assessing player performance. Has Alex Barris as the top performing offensive lineman on Notre Dame this year and the top performing offensive player. He has been that good and he's so important to what happens up front for the Irish. Well, they moved him over to left guard this year to, to be with Eichenberg on the left side because he was the only one without game time experience. So he's over there solidifying that. He works next to Sam Mustafer in the middle. And they have solidified this offensive line this year with some young guys around him. He's, uh, He's a force. He's strong. He moves people. He double teams. He gets really good movement. 57 is Trevor Ruland, who started a guard last week for Tommy Kramer, and uh, he's come out for the moment. And he'll likely be the player in there at left guard. So as they continue to look at bars, those of you who uh, have been bouncing around tonight, let you know Dexter Williams, in his debut, didn't play the first four games, has 119 rushing yards. Bryce Love has been held in check. Two carries for negative three yards in this second half. He does have a touchdown. KJ Costello and JJ Arcego, white side, eighth time this year they've connected. But Ian Book has been very sharp. Five incompletions, two touchdowns, including that one to Nick Wisher. That put the Irish up 14 7. Game's been tied twice at 7 and 14. Notre Dame scored the last 10. But short and long term, there's a concern as Bars comes off. It's a little encouraging that he's walking on it, but 
looked a little scary. Yeah, and, and as as we've seen, it's Ruland from Cary, Illinois, checks in in his spot at left guard. As we've seen historically, you know, players can still have other damage that only shows up in an MRI, MRI or other test, uh, even though they are able to walk off. Williams with the carry to the 32 yard line will bring up third down here. And Trevor Rulin stepping in, a senior. He started last week, as you said. He's got plenty of playing time. He's not inexperienced. Rulin played a couple of games last year that were pretty much decided, but did show quite well when he got 60 snaps. Really, everything with the first team last week against Wake Forest. Stanford, a little defensive confusion on third and three. Book rolling to his right, going to keep it and not get anything out of it. So even though there was a lot of confusion with the Cardinal, we we're still able to get him off the field for the moment. But as you see, a flag is down. Right where Book was starting to roll holding, out. Holding. Offense, Offense, number 78. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. It's Tommy Kramer at right guard. And a lot of time, there's a right guard there, there's Tommy. He reaches. Okariki actually, you know, he's so athletic. He hits gaps and run through, and he just a step quicker. You reach out and hold. Good and, call. And as he and book out on the corner, a lot of times when there's substitution and people run, you don't know what the coverage is, and so you wait for things to declare and clarify, and you're late on a throw. Tyler Newsom kicking to Michael Wilson. Good kick. 50 yards. Wilson from the 18. Brought down by Chase Claypool. Second. Excellent special teams tackle by Claypool tonight to go with his touchdown reception. Chase Claypool having a game against the Cardinal. Gives him a long field. Another special teams takedown. We're in a small room. What? Welcome. A bigger room. Second half with a statement, a 13-play, 75-yard drive capped by the J.K. Dobbins score. Buckeyes lead the Nittany Lions 14-13. Wow, they have 168 yards in the game, so they were really stymied. Teams aren't converting third downs in that one. Tight defensive battle there. Here, Notre Dame is taking a 10-point lead on Stafford. Cardinal trying to get Bryce Love going, and this play is killed before anything else happens. First down. Scooter Harrington, tight end. Doug, uh, you know his dad quite well. Yes, his dad, Scott, was our team captain back at Boston College in the 84 season. He and I were classmates. His son, Scooter, I had a chance to say hi. I saw hi to mom and dad, old college classmates. Fun little reunion for me and Scott. Six foot five, tight end. He's a Stanford tight end. He is a Stanford tight end. They've cranked him out, so have the Irish too. A lot of noise down here. Student section trying to help out from the 14. Love finds that crease and hits it hard. Gets to the 23. You know, maybe nine before Osmar Bilal makes the tackle. Bryce Love finally got to run the ball against a, a good numbers game up front. There were two high safeties, so they had decent numbers up front. You get a nine yard game. If people want to play pass, he will eat you alive. Big day tomorrow, Ryder Cup, NASCAR playoffs, Sunday Night Football. Top 10 matchup here tonight. Truly a big event weekend. Don't forget this season premiere Saturday Night Live. Right after us and your local news here on NBC this evening. Second and six, Costello jump throw, picked off. Aloe Gilman flag comes down. As there was contact with the receiver, that was a Total 50 50 ball that he put up there for grabs. Not his best decision, but may get away with it with the PI. Let's see everything that happened on this play, including the pass rush as well. Pass interference. Defense number 23. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Drew Tranquil 23 is running with Kate Smith up the seam. He's right over him in alignment. 
Gets his hands on him, everything's pretty cool, but he gets there too early and plays into the, the, the receiver as Gilman came flying over the top. It's a correct call and not coming back to it, the try shame to get the, the ball with Smith. Yeah, the, the shame of the play is Gilman's going to make that play no matter what. I agree. I agree. But Drew Trump doesn't know that's going on. So that's a, a break for Schaefer, not with the flag. The flag's the absolute correct call. But Costello really put an iffy ball up there. So the drive keeps going from the 38. And Costello zips it. Julian Love gets a hand in there and knocks it away from J.J. Arcega Whiteside. They've really worked hard on getting their hands on footballs as defensive backs here this year. What coverage? The rotation goes away. He is one on one. Puts his foot in the ground, breaks on the ball, gets a left hand in there, and knocks it away. You cannot cover any better than that. It's not like a true press coverage where he had his hands on him from the beginning. He was playing just a couple yards off. He was going to cover any route he runs. Record setting, breaking Clarence Ellis's mark from back in the late 60s and early 70s. Second and 10, Notre Dame's been getting good pressure of late. Costello clean that time to Trent Irwin. Scoops it up at the 43 yard line. Third and five coming up. So many slant plays in college football now. The quick offensive plays. And the mindset, the mantra from defensive coordinator Clark Lee has been fit, front, and finish on these passes to get hands there. So even though it comes close to a catch, a late hand on an arm or the ball to knock it away. And love and pride, the two corners have been really good throughout the first month of the season. Showing pressure, bringing five, now six. As Costello throws middle of the field's open. Irwin on the run. Trent Irwin picks up a block and goes down to the 28-yard line. Pickup of 29, and a big one for the Cardinal on third down. Boy, what patience on his route. There's some protection from behind. It's going to be a little double move, like a little nod to the outside, and then a bang right in rhythm. Just great patience by Irwin on the move. He didn't just rush it in there. He gave a good, decisive move two steps to the out and back to the post record setting high school receiver child actor from Valencia California they call him Mr. Reliable on this team Trent Irwin with a big grab there so the penalty the third down conversion now for the 28 Costello hit by Kareem and brought down Colin Kareem injured earlier comes in to get the second earning sack of the night it's Kareem on Little out of left tackle, and he just beats him around the edge. Here he is on the outside. Look at him in a sprinter stand, getting down. He gets low, comes underneath, knocks the arms off, and he's right there. That's a short corner. He almost knocks the ball out. Kareem, Aquara, Hayes, all juniors, really made a big impact on this Notre Dame front four this year. Second and 16, Aquara forces Costello to set up. Nearly intercepted by Tranquil. It all feeds in. The pressure forced him to step up. Costello couldn't complete the throw, and he almost got picked off. Yeah, it's Julian Aquara coming around the edge to get pressure. Then he steps up into the mix, and it's, I believe, Jerry Tillery, Tillery yep. with the hit. And then the ball's up for grabs, and Drew Tranquil's going to be thinking about this one all night. Didn't quite get there. I mean, Tillery's just pushing the pocket, pushing the pocket in the lap of the quarterback once he steps up. From here, a field goal will be 52. Their kicker has the distance to get it there. It's third and 16. Costello reads it and throws it. It'll be a gain of six to make the field goal a little bit closer. As Nick Coleman is there to wrap up J.J. Arcega Whiteside. It's a smart play, trying to get it back to a one possession game. Higher percentage field goal attempt for the good kicker, Jet Toner. Takes it from over 50 yards down to a 46 yarder, legitimate attempt. Those are big yards. That's the area where I would always call a safe route or a quarterback draw because it's a long yardage situation to pick up that first down, but you need that yardage for the field goal. This would equal his long 46. Popped the 46 at Utah last year. There's plenty of leg for it. High snap brought down well, and 
Toner bangs it through. Job well done by Jake Bailey, the punter. Doubles as the holder, brought down a high snap. And it's a seven point game. Time now for Above the Rest, brought to you by Jersey Mike's Subs. And uh, subbing into the game, Dexter Williams getting it done. What a big night for him. As soon as he steps on the field, he is explosive at the tailback position. You know he's excited to get on the field. You know he wants the ball. He's got fresh legs. And he has been a dynamic runner, explosive all night. Great addition this week back onto the field with Jafar Armstrong banged up. Out of Orlando, Florida. He's uh, for the moment. Got the numbers on Bryce Love. Both have big carries. Williams has the 45 yarder that he took to the house to open this game. His first touch of the year after missing the first four games of the season. You, know, you get something taken away from you, you get hungry. You get hungry to get back. Jersey Mike's hungry. You get hungry to get back out on the field, get the ball in your hands, and go. And he just wants to show, hey, I'm a part of this team and I'm going to contribute. You just did that, right? I guess. I did hear it. Don't, don't worry. I heard, I heard it. <laughs> Michael Young's back deep for the Jake Bailey kickoff. It wasn't intentional. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> Come on, Doug. Oh, Did you get a touchback? Check on that Notre Dame offensive front. Here's Catherine down on the field. Yeah, Mike, fifth year senior left guard Alex Bars will not return tonight. He has a left knee injury. He spent some time in the medical tent. Brendan Wimbush actually went in to offer him some encouragement. He's going to stay on the field to be with his teammates tonight, but he will get a full evaluation after this game. All right. Thank you, Catherine. It's, uh, so disappointing for uh, a, a young man who has really become the leader on this team. He and Sam Mustafa are the two captains, the left guard and the center. And as we said before, Ruin 57 will step in. With 216 left in this third quarter. Each team a field goal in the third. And through the hands of Alizé Mack, incomplete. And he had some room to run, but Alizé couldn't secure it. And he was off and moving. It was a simple little throw underneath, and he's catching that ball running. Max coming off two of his uh, best games. Did such a good job in the Vanderbilt game of handling pressure. And then at Wake Forest, it was a six catch game. The Vanderbilt game was more his blocking and getting the job done, fending off low attempts to bring him down. Jones is shaken up. Tony Jones took a hit, and he is hurt on that run of about three yards. It's become a tough. Second half here for the Irish. Gabe Reed on the hit. And Notre Dame junior running back is being looked at. See, his left leg got rolled up on as Reed brought him down. Holder was making the tackle, and that left leg got trapped underneath. Tough to see for uh, these players. Every really time is. these guys get hurt, uh, no matter the side, no matter the team, no matter who you're a fan of, you, when you're around them, uh, as we get to be during the weeks when we cover games, you, you know how much work they put into it. You know, the average fan sits back and they hear the stories of the guy that came back from this major yeah. injury or that injury, and and to them it's oh it's that injury. I've heard that injury 20 times. Sure. But these individuals. When there is a, you know, and I'm not saying it's a major injury, but when there's an injury, it's rehab, it's work to get back to the field. Yep. You know, not everybody is Cole Komet, you know, who had a bad high ankle sprain and somehow is back on the field. But uh, you know, you hope, you just hope they're not that serious because these kids put so much work into it. So Brian Kelly has no Jafar Armstrong, running back with five touchdowns, most of the team this year rushing. And now no Tony Jones Jr. It's a pass on third and seven, which is caught by Boykin for his ninth reception of the game and a first down. You know, great coverage. Holders press coverage on a big receiver. Great position. Ball right off his ear. Great ball placement. Boykin in some pain as well. Stayed out there as they run it for about three yards up the middle with Williams. Uh, Williams and Avery Davis, a couple of the backs are available right now. That fade route in particular, that ball was thrown quickly, 
And I've always, when it's, when it's that way, I'd like to throw it early and get it there before the DB can even get his head around. And that's how Ian booked through that favor. Second and seven. Book rolls and throws sideline to Claypool. It's going to be shy on the first down, about a yard shy. Right in front of uh, Paulson and Debo, the outstanding sophomore corner for the Cardinal. Moving the pocket a little there. Uh, Stanford has picked up the pressure that's become quicker rhythm throw. Get the ball out or move the pocket. Up the middle, Williams. Dexter Williams again to the 26-yard line. Picked up at 17 before Buncombe, the safety, brought it down. Well, Ruins in the game at left guard. Watch him do a double team here and get a little bit of push. Now it's still cut all the way backside. But the senior steps in and does his job. From the 26, big pickup by Williams with the pressure as Book gets rid of it and incomplete. It's an incomplete pass. It wasn't a pretty play, but almost a big loss for Stanford there. Great pressure. Just bringing it. Like I said, they're starting to blitz. Bring Stanford's bringing all the pressure. Uh, Okariki is the guy getting through there to get the hit, but what an athletic play to off his back foot. He threw this ball about 40 yards to get it to out of bounds. Now it's a little dangerous because if you get hit at all and it doesn't get there, it's going to be picked. Second and 10. Ian Book setting up the screen for Williams and running through was Mustafa Branch to make the play. His cousins are Dion Branch, the Patriot star from back in the day, and older Cliff Branch, Raiders days. That family's made a lot of football plays, and Mustafa's got the speed to add to it. If he doesn't get there, that's a touchdown. Yeah. He, he basically backboard the block, cut through, and just closed the gap and made a great open field tackle. Ian Book's going to pull the reins in here and take it to the other side for the fourth quarter. Each team with three in the third. And off we go to the fourth. Notre Dame 24, Stanford 17. And back at Notre Dame Stadium after these messages from your local station. You're watching Notre Dame football on NBC. Presented by Michigan. Coverage being brought to you by the unexpected energy of Exxon Mobil. Dave scored 14 in the first. Stanford seven, been even since. Off the go to the fourth, Irish lead by seven. And start this quarter with a third and 11 and some motion. Illegal snap, offense, number 53. Five yard penalty, still third down. Sam Mustafer wants to know. Did he shift the ball? Mm -hmm. Take the Irish back to the 32. Field goal from here is right around 50 yards. So this is very similar to the last Stanford drive. We're getting any yards here and make the field goal a little bit easier. Pressure coming. Book given to Avery Davis for the first down inside the 50. Malik Antoine the tackle. There's a flag down. Holding. Offense. Alize Mack. Alize Mack. Working on the left side tight end here. He's good, he's good, he's good, but when the defender starts to break away, you gotta let go. He continues to hold on, and it's pretty blatantly obvious. And that and that's Reed. Gabe Reed, and now that brings him back to the 40 yard line. There's a slight wind going left to right. There's probably need about five or six yards to get in comfortable field goal range for Yoon. Book's going to get there with the run. He gets to the 32-yard line, set up a 50-yard field goal attempt for the Irish place kicker. There's my quarterback draw on those long yarded situations when you're on the edge of field goal range, they're playing pass. It's almost a surefire five to ten yard gain. He has a couple of misses. This is, would be his longest of this season. It made a 52-yarder against Navy. Has made one already tonight. Good from 37. This one from 50. Rush off the edge. Yoon hooks it left. No good. Had the leg, but missed it to the left. And Stanford within seven will get the ball in good field position. 
big sequence of events. You get the penalty, you get the whole, you get the procedure, you get the holding, and you back up to the edge of field goal range, making a long kick, and now it's still a one-score game. And Brian Kelly loves his golf and uses golf analogies often with his players and uh, with Justin Yoon as well. And that's just one of those where you're just trying to pound it and may have hooked it just a little bit. Meantime, Book got a flying foot come down on his hand. The starting quarterback who's the holder going to get some attention over there on the sideline. Seems to be okay. KJ Costello and the Cardinal trying to tie the game, trying to get the screen to love. Here he is. And a whole bunch of nerd aimers there, too. Flag is down as Tavon Coney and Kurt Heinisch made the tackle. Flags back by the quarterback. Holding. Holding. Offense. Offense. Number 75. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. That's the uh, hat trick. That's three for Andy Hall. Two holds. But son, to run in a screen, we want them to rush the passer. Don't hold on a screen. Pretty blatantly obvious. I, you know, these are the type plays though that I would anticipate a little more. Get Bryce Love the ball out in space somehow, somewhere. Love has two receptions for seven yards. He's run for 75. 18 touches, 82 yards for last year's Heisman runner-up. Here comes Scarlett on the inside with the run. For three yards of Cameron Scarlett. Becomes the first non Bryce Love named back to take a handoff tonight. It's been all Bryce Love in the running game so far. And we're so used to seeing Stanford just play a whole mess of tight ends, bring in extra linemen, line up, and just smash mouth. They have been a little more wide open in this game. Trying to pick up about half of it here. Don't need the whole thing. Give yourself a third and manageable. Second and 18. That's the four-man rush. Costello will go down for the third time. Tillery gets him again. Julian Aquar on the ball. Just pushes him up the field up top. Pushes him up the field and comes under. He's, he's sneaky, elusive. He's athletic in his pass rush. He's not a power rusher. Having a sensational first five games. First down away to all the way at the 42 yard line. Gonna run and get out of dodge. And love is caught from behind. Julian O'Quarrum. And this no, Bryce Love limping back over to the sideline as well after being pulled down. You're not supposed to be able to run these plays down from the backside. You don't block the backside rush. He's unblocked. You're supposed to be hitting this front side, and Julian Aquara just comes flat down the line and chases Bryce Love down from behind. And watch, he falls on Love here on his legs. His uh, left ankle gets trapped. Remember all the ankle problems Love had last year and played with so much pain. Watch that. Jake Bailey kicks it for Stanford. Not his best. Fair caught on the run, a 38 yard kick. And Fink brings it in at the 42. Stanford's athletic training staff looks like Bryce Love. Heisman run up a year ago. Well, banged up at the moment. When it's your job. Oh. Buy Untuck It. Shirts designed to be worn untucked. Untuckit.com. Buy Jersey Mike subs. Be a sub above. And buy the U.S. Army. Find out more at GoArmy.com. See some of the scores of the tight and memorable finishes over the last few years between these two teams. David Shaw telling us he loves the opportunity to come this way when you recruit in the Midwest, even the South. Do recruits know that your program will be over in this part of the country to play every couple of years? Family gets to see him in person. Defense pass off the hands of Avery Davis and incomplete. Almost that opportunity moment for the Stanford defense. Meantime, while we were away, Bryce Love limped over to the sideline. We showed you that going to the break. Went into Stanford's medical tent on the far side. The athletic training staff is looking at him. So as he's in the tent there, that's the point of concern, short and long term for the Cardinal. Any time in this fourth quarter, seven-point game. 
Oscar Williams for only a yard. Tony Jones Jr.'s return is questionable, Catherine Tappan tells us. Lower leg injury for the Irish running back who's carried it the most this season. It was a defensive touchdown by Stanford last week that stemmed the tide and got them rolling into the fourth quarter. And they almost had an opportunity two plays ago. Third and nine. Stanford brings a whole bunch of pressure. That pass is caught. What a grab for the first down on the sideline. Well, that mark is uh, put in an interesting spot. Boykin had the ball extended out. And let's see where it's going to end up. It's where the ball is when he crosses the sideline, where the ball crosses the sideline. It's the 48 yard line. The previous play is under review. They're going to look at it upstairs with the ACC crew. There's a look about as close to down the line as you're going to have. And we'll bring in Terry McCauley, our rules analyst, to look at this with us. Terry, I thought that move there had him. With a first down live. Right. So, like you said, Mike, it's where it crosses the sideline, and he's got it extended beyond the, the line to gain. And, and it looks. Yeah, mean, meantime, Terry, hang on a second. They're going to take Bryce Love back to the locker room here to get a look at him as some light rain begins to fall. Love, who had dealt with those injuries throughout last season, is being walked back to the locker room for further exam. It's a tough, tough scene for all fans of college football. Uh, let's, let's go back to that review here Terry and re-detail re what you were talking about. So yeah I think we've got a great down the line shot that, that shows that it, the ball is crossing the sideline beyond the line to gain. I think there is enough here to reverse this to a first down. And I cut you off so we can show Bryce Love there but just uh, emphasize that point one more time where the ball is when. When it crosses the sideline. Talk about that After review, the, there. the receiver's forward progress was stopped at the 47 yard line, resulting in a first down. So, replay gets that one right. As uh, when you watch games and see all the reviews, Terry consistently makes this point of a shot as close to down the line as possible, which you don't always have because the cameras are in set and fixed positions. But that one sitting right at midfield gave you a good look at it. So the Irish keep the drive going as the rain starts to fall lightly. Williams will gain three as Okariki brings him down. Bobby Okariki has been very active for Stanford's defense as per usual. Absolutely. He's gone sideline to sideline. He's taken on blocks. He's slicing through, backdooring the, the pullers to get into the backfield. Tremendous athlete at the linebacker position. Second and seven. Book smokes it out to Fink. Made a man miss. And to the 30 yard line goes Chris Fink with a first down. It's funny. You look at all the talent, the skill, the height, the speed. Chris Fink has the most catches to this Notre Dame team coming into tonight. And your boy Claypool, the special teams guy, the freak of an athlete, had a heck of a block on a two in the open field. He does a little of everything. From the 30 to Boykin. Again, Boykin. This time he cannot hang on. Rolling on the field is an incomplete pass. Second down. Elijah Holder did a good job completing the play to help knock it away. That block you were talking about. You got Claypool running down and covering kicks, kickoffs. Here he is in a blocking situation for his buddy. Picks up the block, stays on it, creates a crease, so it's one on one on the outside, and then Fink's elusive. Second down here now. Williams to the left. Extra Williams gains. Seven yards on that carry. It's going to get him over 150 in his return game. Brian Kelly was telling us he'd love to get him eight to ten carries. He's got 20 now and 153. For a guy that hasn't been playing, he is going to be sore. That's right. <laughs> what a day. And Tommy is uh, out for four games. This is the game he returns, and boy, do they need him. Book on the slant. Claypool hangs on with the catch. Inside the 20, it's a Notre Dame first down to the 17. And we'll go under nine minutes here. Very important. A couple of snaps coming up for Stanford's defense. When Ian Book makes the decision, it is very decisive. He goes with it, commits to the throw, because this is tight coverage. And he just sees it. He sees it quickly and sticks it in between two defenders. He wanted a false start there. 
didn't get the whistle and they get Williams carrying Cardinal defenders down to the nine to the eight yard line. There's rule and pull him with the block but it's just power after contact keep the legs churning keep them falling forward. That's five six yards after contact. From the seven book will sling it. It's caught by Boykin. Boykin's in the end zone. Touchdown Notre Dame. So this time off the zone read action he throws it out here to Boykin and he gets blocks from Fink and Claypool. Unblocked defender coming from the inside, so you sprint for the corner to get away from him. His buddies stay on their blocks, create a crease, and he's in standing up. And Ian Book has thrown three touchdowns on the night. One to Wisher, one to Claypool, and now Boykin. Justin Yoon with the extra point. Boykin has 144 yards. 11 receptions. That touchdown that put Notre Dame up 14. 31 17 as Ian Book solidifies that job with a very good night at home. The singles on Sunday. That's what the U.S. faces in Paris, 6 a.m. Eastern Time. Get up early here on NBC. A lot of work to do for the U.S. Jim Furyk, the captain, has loaded up that team up top. Tiger Woods will be in that first half dozen to go early, trying to get points on the board. Sunday red last week when he won the Tour Championship. Did you notice? Still loyal to his school. That's a Stanford yardage book cover. See if he finds some good numbers in there tomorrow. And it's Johnny Miller, the guy we'll have it for you from Paris. No return on the Cameron Scarlet touchback. But KJ Costello has no Bryce Love, and he is facing a lot of heat already. Down 14, he's going to have to deal with this Notre Dame pass rush and the pressure of the trio Colin Kareem, Julian Okwara, and Dalen Hayes. 45 pressures in the edge combined. That's tied for the most by a defender trio in the FBS. Right up there with Oregon, one of the two teams in the country coming into this week. Have three guys to have 10 or more pressures on the quarterback. So, Doug, it, you, you can speak to this so well. It's not always the sack, but those pressures that are such a big measure of success up front. You got to get rid of the football. You get your arm hit, that's how interceptions happen. You throw the ball away, you're in long yarded situations. You can't let a route develop down the field. It's a throw ball game now for the Cardinal. Intercepted! Tavon Pony down inside the 20 yard line. It's just a little six yard out. And Coney breaks under the route, gets the pick. Great coverage. This is usually a gimme route for quarterbacks. You know, if you're a little tight end on a six yard out route, Coney breaks on it. He gets underneath the route. And then he said he was a running back. He wanted the opportunity to run with the ball. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, intercepting team. Trying to listen to the call there, the unsportsmanlike, and what it was flagged for. Pony comes up with his first interception, and he had talked to us yesterday about the opportunity to get in coverage and make plays, and he was able to get his hands on the ball for the first time. And comes up with a turnover there, but the 15 yards back of the Irish to the 35. Avery Davis, the back. Books looking. Oh, wide open. Alize Mack. Good night. Touchdown, Notre Dame. What a call. You take your shot and plays after the turnover. You always want to keep right back after him and get it in the end zone. Just a great play call design. You're, you're crossing receivers and flowing everything to the right. Mac is the tight end. He's over on this side. He's going to sneak across. Block, block, block. Hesitate across the field. 
Nobody home on the backside. Great play design. Chip Long. A lot of credit to the second year offensive coordinator. Justin Yoon. That's for the extra point. Mac joins the touchdown parade. Book has thrown four. Mac finding the end zone to run a one play drive after the turnover. His first TD of the year. The Irish are on their way. To the night. And all of a sudden, a tight game has become a 21 point Notre Dame lead, and Bryce was still being looked at. Touchback on the kick by Jonathan Dorr. I'll tell you what, as a quarterback, you want your offensive coordinator once a game by play design, chip long, by play design, give me one easy touchdown, coach. Just give me one. I'll get the others, I'll earn the other two, or whatever comes. And Chip Long did a great job of finding the situation. Call, play call, sneak the tight end out the back door. It's a layup of a touchdown pass for Ian Book. He gets the reward. Matt gets the touchdown. But then, you know, you're going to have to earn the other ones. But you give me one, Coach. Give me one. And you've seen the ball spread around. Four different Notre Dame players have caught touchdowns. Now Stanford, without love, has to be in express mode with eight to go. KJ Costello hit by Tillery. The ball's out again. And it's recovered by Stanford. Walker Little, the tackle got on. That's another sack. Tillery's got a couple. Four for the Irish tonight. Little twist stunt here. He comes out. We're coming under. Pushes the tackle out wide and then back underneath him. Just the pass rush, you know, Costello. Last week, the game was putting his hands in the fourth quarter. Start throwing the football, it brought him back. This week, when they've had to go to that, they can't protect. They cannot protect, you give them an opportunity. Loss of 10, second and 20. They're at him again. Tillery got him again. Oh, my goodness. What a performance by Tillery. Basically the same spot. He starts out. He's going to just come out a little bit, but it's just pure pass rush. Dalen Hayes give him a little push at the end to get there, maybe. Straight through. It's it, it beating Hamilton on the left side of the offensive line, right side of the defensive line. He's a handful. And the pass rush has been a difference this year for Notre Dame in general. All those pressures you were just talking about, that hasn't been here in a handful of years. Colin Kareem. Slow to get up again as he was earlier in the first half. He has since come back and made a play as well. There's a third Notre Dame player. We'll see come over to the sideline, injured in the second half. Alex Bars, the left guard, injured his knee. Tony Jones Jr. got hurt. Kareem. Getting the response from the crowd. Doug, this is a Stanford outfit that had only given up five sacks in their first 240 minutes of play this season. And it's five tonight. It's a team that prides himself on being strong up front. Their extra tight ends, their extra offensive line, and being a physical team that tells you how good a pass rush they're, get, they're facing them. And third and 28, they, they've got no receivers in the game right now. They're just going to run the ball. Trying to get out of here in one piece. Coney with the tackle on the run to the 15 yard line. As the players come off the pile, there, Trevor Spates had the carry there. Spates carries because of the injury to Bryce Love. Love, who dealt with the high ankle sprain after the Oregon game throughout the season last year, was tracked down from behind by Julian O'Quara. Who came down on his left ankle as he was pulling him down? We saw Love get up gingerly, walk to the sideline in the tent, and went back towards the locker room or somewhere else to get the full medical attention here before the Cardinal fly back to Palo Alto tonight. Chris faked the fair catch at the 38. Under six minutes. Trace McSorley to Pat Fryermuff. Penn State leads it 20 to 14. Still about 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter there, Mike. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting week. A lot of folks have a lot of choices to make on their ballot. Certainly that game will continue to play out uh, as this one has here with the Irish.
coming up with a very big fourth quarter on both sides of the ball to take this 38 17 lead. Avery Davis runs to the left and he'll get to the 42 yard line. Doug, you look at opponents and you spend the whole year trying to figure out what's going to happen. I think college football, because of a tight 12 game regular season, people spent so much of the offseason guessing. Everyone had Clemson in the playoff and they were a play away from losing to Syracuse at home as a three and a half touchdown underdog today. So you just can't get too far ahead. It's still just September, but Notre Dame's put it. Put themselves in a really good position if they can close this game out going forward the next two months. Second and five. Davis left got pulled down by a face mask. The ball comes out as well. We have to check that, but in all likelihood, a face mask penalty will be called here on Stanford. And as you look down the road at the schedule for Notre Dame. Virginia Tech lost the quarterback Florida State not as good as you would have anticipated this year Stanford with the recovery here pretty sure this has to be a face mask called mm -hmm. back so I'm getting past this game Jordan Fox mm -hmm. player pool now the question is what was it a, was it a face mask here they're having a conversation Personal yep. foul. foul, face mask, face mask. defense, 15-yard <laughs> penalty, automatic first down. That'll take it to the 44, Stanford. Go ahead, Doug. You know, so you look ahead down the road at games that was really anticipated being very difficult games, and all of a sudden, potentially, Notre Dame's got a shot at those, and it, it may not be quite as daunting as you thought. And well, then, of course, at USC at the end of the season, USC always very talented and tough at USC and we know the but record, it's possible yeah, the records matter very little in that game so often I mean, you thought Virginia Tech was dumb when Josh Jackson their quarterback gets hurt uh, they put up a good performance in the 31 14 win at Duke tonight as Jameer Smith comes in the freshman running back gets the carry and for Smith that is his third he had two in the game against Wake Forest. Northwestern didn't look like they were going to be a dangerous team and they took Michigan to the very edge. We mentioned earlier the Syracuse game that they'll have uh, with Notre Dame and Yankee Stadium. So it's so hard to look down the road. But this was one Notre Dame had to have for having hopes of the playoff down the line. And I think it's the way they've managed this game. They took over on the defensive line. They finished the game which they didn't do earlier in the year. I know Ian Book's a quarterback. It's a different team right now. And they're just gaining momentum. They're, it's we anticipated a low-scoring, tight ball game. Yep, balls loose. Yep, that ball loose too. Notre Dame on it at the 41-yard line. Remember, it was a last late turnover by Oregon that gave Stanford incredible life to come back and win that game in overtime in Eugene. But it's a much different ask with 3:40 to go in this one and a 21-point margin. Yeah, but there were two of them. <laughs> there was a snap over the quarterback's head, one a touchdown yeah. the other way, and then the fumble in under a minute to go. Two huge plays. Jerry Tillery has four night. sacks officially tonight. It's the most by a Notre Dame player in the Brian Kelly era, most going back since 2005. It's a phenomenal performance. As Brian Kelly runs down, takes a timeout before the play clock runs out with 3.17 to go. Prior to the delay a game, Timeout Notre Dame, their first of the half. 30 seconds. He is a handful. He uses his hands so well in his pass rush and his power, just putting the guard back in the quarterback's lap, going all the way through to the Then he gets, you know, a couple of the one-on-one -on -one moves where he's going after him. Here he has the quarterback step up into his lap. But here, he's not even doing it. He's twisting to try to open a gap for someone else, and boom, he steps back underneath and makes the sack. So he's in a rhythm now, so it's like the heck with this, I'm going for it. There's number four, gets a little help from his friend, Darren Hayes, with a little push to make sure he gets there. I'll tell you, he's, he's, he's very, he came in as a freshman, a man, and he had he used his hands well. As a freshman, they raved about his pass rush moves. And he just got better and better. And you might remember the incident in the USC game a couple of years ago out there. Jerry Tillery came back through. 2017 eyes open different guy we did a halftime interview with him a couple of weeks ago that aired and 
Jerry Tillery is one of the most interesting young men you'd uh, ever find. Ian Book running in trouble, flipping it forward, and is caught by Demir Smith. No linemen were downfield. First down, Notre Dame. How's my athlete doing at quarterback? How, how's the basketball player with the backhand shovel? Of course, it, it, the, the, the heart's in the throat on the coaching staff when they sure. see this go up in this situation. But he's just moving around. It, this this wasn't a risky thing to end. He saw it ahead of him. He flipped it. And a good job, right. good job by those offensive linemen not running downfield and staying there. It's the only way you could get the ball there unless he threw it left-handed. Aaron Banks, by the way, has been in this uh, entire drive at left tackle in place of Liam Eichenberg. So it's a second line left side, if you will, with the bars injury from earlier. Trevor Ruland over there as Jameer Smith, the freshman from Sanford, North Carolina, runs to the left. Uh, the Stanford team, as we mentioned, they, they still have a path to success in the Pac-12. They'll play at Washington in a huge game. They'll play Utah coming up next. That Utah defense is fierce. So saw a tough defense here tonight. We get Utah next week. And Herm Edwards and that crew down in Tempe, they got something going. Never fun in the Palouse with Mike Price. They'll be coming to the farm. And you see the rest of the schedule down the stretch. And David Shaw, a guy who has uh, been a part of this program for a long time 21 years, a player of coaches. Dad was a coach there. We talked to him about Stanford, and, and he's said it's such a great institution. One of the reasons he stays and doesn't go to the NFL. They're training leaders, people who change whatever industry they go into. So you can run into the bookstore when you have recruits there, and, and there's Katie Ledecky. There's so many different people who you find on campus. He said, You're a quarterback there? You're just one of many special, cool people on that campus. And that's what energizes a, a really fine guy who's molded a lot of great people at Stanford. Did you say you run into Tom Hanks? Tom Hanks in the bookstore? Oh, yeah. I'm going out to Stanford to visit. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to say hi to Tom Hanks. Smith gets the first down and that'll clinch it. That'll do it. And the Irish will get a really big win. Very impressive. Finished the fourth quarter. Ran out the clock with the offense on the field. You see NBCSN. We're going to have an Notre Dame postgame show for you tonight. Liam McHugh and Chris Sims going to get all the reaction to this. Ian Book, four touchdown, 278 yard night. Jerry Tillery's four sack game. And the Irish get set to go to Blacksburg. It's never easy against Bud Foster's defense. They're coming off a win. The games get more important the deeper you go. But every test in September has been answered in grand style, even with a quarterback change. And Ian Book has his first home win as the Notre Dame quarterback. You're stepping in as a quarterback, replacing a guy that's been winning for a year and a half. And he goes out there and plays like there's no pressure on him, like he's just out there for a Sunday drive and doing his thing. He was very comfortable from beginning to end. The man from Sacramento beats the team from Palo Alto. Brian Kelly and David Shaw exchange greetings there. And of course, the concern for Stanford with the help of Bryce Love here down the line. This game was 14 14. Notre Dame scored 24 in the last 27. Here's Catherine with Coach Kelly. Coach, offensively, your team was clicking on all cylinders. A defensive, solid performance tonight. What most impressed you about this win? Uh, you know, we played four quarters, uh, we were physical. Um, you know, we were the better team tonight uh, in all phases. You know, defensively, we got after the quarterback. Costello's a good player, um, and we didn't give him much time. Uh, Jerry Tiller was, couldn't block him tonight. Um, and then, you know, obviously offensively, the ability to run the football tonight against a, you know, a really good football team. That's a uh, you know, top 10 football team. Anytime you can do that, run the football, uh, good things will happen. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. Mike? 550 yards on 88 plays. They ran 37 more plays than Stanford. Dominating performance. Brian Kelly's full press conference is available for you on NBCSports.com. Coming up next, except for the West Coast, is your local news and then the season premiere of Saturday Night Live. Adam Driver host Kanye West, the musical guest. We're back here in two weeks. It's the Irish against Pitt on NBC. Post game is on NBCSN right now.
Catherine Tappen, Terry McCauley, Doug Flutie, our producer Rob Hyland, our director Pierre Musa, our entire NBC team, Mike Tirico. Thanks for watching Notre Dame Football on NBC, presented by Michelin.